It's Tuesday, the 26th of June, 2012. I'm Alex Jones. Welcome to another edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Coming up. Tonight, NATO and the UN express their supreme authority as reports suggest Western military intervention is in full swing in Syria. Plus, the UN receives half a trillion dollars from world governments and corporations to accelerate Agenda 21, the march toward global governance. Then, millions of genetically engineered mosquitoes are released into the wild. And Gerald Salente joins Alex Jones via video Skype. When Obama was down in the polls, go back to April of 2011, when Donald Trump was on his case, all of a sudden, we wake up on a Monday morning, they got Osama bin Laden. Obama's poll numbers skyrocketed up to 60% plus. It's the oldest game in the book, and they keep playing it over and over again, and the gullible people buy it. So what I'm saying is enough. We know this game, we've seen it before, and that's why I'm helping to launch with you and others the second American revolution. Also, Smashing Pumpkins frontman Billy Corgan talks with Alex Jones in an explosive interview. That's up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. First off tonight, things are moving in a very dangerous direction in Syria. We're going to be breaking down the fact that Al-Qaeda, on record, Fox News, LA Times, you name it, admit is being used to take over Libya and now Syria, and they're the good guys, and I'm unpatriotic for not supporting Al-Qaeda. In fact, I'm a conspiracy theorist for pointing out before it was even in the news that Al-Qaeda worked for the banks that have hijacked this country and that... Mega banks had taken us over and conquered us, but now CNBC admits that. But that makes me even more wrong. That makes my entire crew even worse. How dare you be dead on and right and be right first? Like Mark Twain said about a patriot is a scarce man, hated, feared, and scorned. But in time when his cause succeeds, the timid join him because then it costs nothing to be a patriot. No, they say that you're wrong, but you're right, but you're bad and they're good. Uh, let's get into the first uh, nightmare situation. Military sources out of Israel, this is at Infowars.com, we have links to Debka file and others, say British commandos are operating in Syria, Assad compound under siege, reports suggest Western military intervention is in full swing. And just like in the Downing Street and White House memos, Bush and Tony Blair wanted to paint up U.S. aircraft like UN, fly them low, get them shot down or crash them to blame it uh, on Saddam as a pretext to invade. Regardless of what you think of Saddam, that is criminal. That's a false flag. But even though that's been declassified, well, first leaked, then declassified, I'm not supposed to talk about it because being informed and knowing how stuff really works is a bad conspiracy theorist. So, hey, Iraq war was real. It was good. He had nukes. And he ran 9-11 too. And uh, maybe patriotic here. Al-Qaeda is good. Of course, I don't agree with that, but... I've got a, I'm supposed to get my rights up because of Al-Qaeda, but, but Al-Qaeda is good in Syria and Libya and the State Department funding the Muslim Brotherhood. I, you know what? I'm just going to do whatever I'm told, so I'm trendy and cool. I'm not going to be a conspiracy theorist because Obama's truth squads and others we're going to talk about coming up. Uh, yeah, oh, 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 yeah, there's the article. Uh, that's how London Guardian Bush told Blair the U.S. had drawn up a provocative plan to fly U-2, reconnaissance aircraft painted as U.N., colors over Iraq to get it basically shot down and then uh, blame it on Saddam. There you go. That's the London Guardian. But uh, again, they're, they're conspiracy theorists too. Get those traitors off of there, okay? Just Gulf of Tonkin never happened, even though they admit they staged that to get us into Vietnam. Operation Ajax is declassified stage terror. Operation Gladio. Um, so many other events. Let's just ignore all that, okay? Back to worshiping known liars, okay? I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm going to worship known liars. I'm a trendy. All right. Uh, anyways, back to the new event. So they're flying F-16s into their airspace. Syria warns them last week. They said, you're doing bombing runs. 
with your U.S. bought F-16s, big part of NATO, Turkey, who the Bilderberg Group wants to attack them first. We've broken that down. NATO, U.S., British forces massing on the border of Turkey and Syria, massing uh, on uh, other borders uh, as well, the one there in Jordan. And um, all of this is going on. Here's some footage of the plane getting shot down. So, so it's flying over their airspace and then turns around after the missile's been fired and gets shot down. Not that you can see much on that tape, but it's admitted that the aircraft got shot down. Actually, that's a conspiracy theory, too. That, that didn't happen. Of course, they say it happened, so it must have happened. But if tomorrow they say it didn't happen, I'll be a conspiracy theorist if I point out that they said it did happen. Because remember, they control reality like Karl Rove told the New York Times. Uh, and continuing here, Turkey now threatens to attack Syria. They say they're going to keep flying planes over their territory. They're going to put up with it. Or they're going to attack them. And they say that if they move any military forces around their border, uh, as Syria masses forces, that they're going to attack them that way. So that's a new deal. It's like, if I see you in your own backyard, I'm going to come over there and beat your brains out with a baseball bat. You know, and I'm going to fly some, G I'm going to, I'm going to come in your living room and I'm going to piss on your rug. And if you try to throw me out of there, well, I'm going to shoot you. So they come knock on the door, get out of the way. Where's the rug? Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Uh, Mr. Turkey. Uh, the rug is uh, right over there. Uh, please uh, enjoy yourself. There you go. So they're running an old trick once again. There are those reports. Uh, continuing here, all too predictable, Patrick Henningsen reports, Bilderberg plan to force NATO member Turkey into Syrian war. And he goes over the fact that we've all predicted that this indeed was coming and part of the larger plan and that there are Russian forces there now ahead of this. So this isn't going to go the way of Libya. This is going to be quite, quite nasty. Now, we're going to get into the next report here that I filed, what, over a year? When did I file this report, dude? I forget the exact date on it. Seems from memory, it was a couple years ago, I put together this Al-Qaeda hoax report just showing you some of the articles from that time period where it was admitted in plain view that Al-Qaeda was a Western creation used to overthrow countries all over the world, used to fight the Russians, used to attack the Serbs, used to attack us, and then be used as a pretext to take our basic uh, liberties. So we're going to go to this report and then I'm going to give you the latest news where it's in mainstream media that Al-Qaeda works for NATO and the U.S. government. But coming up, they have libertarian truth squads now that are saying we're not supposed to talk about it or we're not trendy and cool and we're the ones causing problems in America. If we would just stop living in reality and, and let some little neocons run everything, everything would be fine. So uh, that is coming up. Let's go ahead and uh, go to this report from several years ago. We'll find out the date while it's playing. The system thinks you're stupid. They think you're morons. And I'm about to cover one of the biggest examples of this in modern history. One of the biggest hoaxes I've ever seen. Anyone who's followed the news for the last few decades, anyone who's researched admitted mainline history knows that Al-Qaeda was CIA created with the backing and support of the Saudi Arabians and the Israelis as well as Pakistani intelligence. Zbigniew Brzezinski's written two books bragging that in 79 they created the group, had them attack the Russians to get them to then invade Afghanistan so that the Soviets could have their, quote, Vietnam. This is a fact. And the Muslim brigades uh, being controlled by British intelligence goes back to Lawrence of Arabia. And then Hitler took over the Middle East during the first few years of World War II, and they went over to his control. But the hoax is that in the attack against the Serbs to take over Serbia, it was admitted al-Qaeda and Osama bin Laden running those operations. And then NATO came in and bombed all of Serbia, and they were forced to give up one-third of their land, basically to Albanian-backed Muslim rebels who were calling themselves al-Qaeda. Then, of course, we have uh, the attacks of 9-11 and the Newsweek headlines about hijackers trained at U.S. bases and the dean of the defense language school 
coming out and saying that they were trained at U.S. bases. And then you have uh, the Times of London as well reporting on the airlift of evil. Months after the Afghanistan war started, U.S. military and British military captured thousands of top al-Qaeda and Taliban commanders, and they would be ordered to release them and fly them out into Pakistan to start the next wave of destabilization. So al-Qaeda on record is a CIA slash British slash Israeli slash uh, Saudi Arabian creation. And they're used all over the world. And, and then you add to that Fox News AP last October 2010 reporting, Anwar al-Awlaki, the guy they're now saying is more powerful than Osama bin Laden, trained in the U.S., ran the underwear bombing, uh, the Christmas Day event, ran the Fort Hood shooting, ran the Times Square attack, uh, the list goes on and on, the shoe bomber. He's always handling these patsies, and it turns out he's secretly hanging out at the Pentagon when he's been on the most wanted list and getting orders and having dinner with the Secretary of the Army and top brass while he's on the news as the head of Al-Qaeda. Julie Kurtz joins us from Washington. You've got to be kidding me. Yeah, here's what we know. Fox News has learned that Anwar al-Awlaki, the American Muslim cleric, remember him with a worldwide following, dined with military brass at the Pentagon within months of the 9-11 attacks. Now, you add to this hoax now that the openly Western-funded rebels in the east of Libya, and I'm not saying Gaddafi's a good guy, the point is the West overthrew Egypt and its own puppet to the east of Libya. They've brought down Tunisia. Now it's admitted that British special forces were inside eastern Libya even before the latest rebellion started. So Al-Qaeda rebels, and it's admitted that the head of the Libyan rebels was trained by the CIA for decades in Virginia, and he admits that he's working with Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda. And so I have to get up here and either say no to this hoax and expose the facts or say I'm a bad American. Because I refuse to say that now Al-Qaeda are freedom fighters and great people. I must refuse uh, to be ignorant and not face the facts of history. But the average gullible person out there who buys into the system will make the decision to say, oh, I guess Al-Qaeda is good. It's like 1984. We've never been at war with East Asia. And the next day, we've always been at war with East Asia. And if you pointed out that, well, you said we were at war with them yesterday, but we're not at war today, and that we were never at war then you get arrested in that system. And that's basically where this country and where the West is going, where the system thinks we're so stupid that Western intelligence is in the east of Libya using radical Muslim Al-Qaeda backed out of Saudi Arabia and arms out of Saudi Arabia and Egypt to destabilize Gaddafi. Gaddafi then fights armed force trying to overthrow the government, and our media calls them protesters. Protesters who had tanks and missile launchers and Western weapons. Oh, the poor protesters. And the media lied and said he strafed protesters. Turned out that wasn't true. The media lied and said that he'd, he'd run to Venezuela to try to give the rebels support, think they would win. It doesn't mean that there aren't groups in Libya who don't like the goofy uh, dictator Muammar Gaddafi. But Muammar Gaddafi is independent and has tried to build a strong Africa outside of the New World Order. And that's why he must be brought down. He doesn't have an international private central bank running his country. They have their own central bank. And that's why the system is doing this. And they think we have no memory where they're telling us Al-Qaeda is horrible. We've got to take all your liberties in America because they may attack you any minute. The end of the Bill of Rights, freedom is dead. America surrenders and gives up all its rights to Homeland Security to keep us safe because of Al-Qaeda. But then Al-Qaeda who wants to overthrow the secular Arab leader, Gaddafi, is being brought in to do this, and then we're being told it's humanitarian and we've got to bomb them and attack them to protect them. I mean, think about it, folks. Amor al-Awlaki, the number one guy under bin Laden, secretly hanging out at the Pentagon. The Taliban and al-Qaeda being flown out to safety in the first few months of the Afghan war to start the next crisis. Al-Qaeda being used to attack the Serbs. When the Serbs fight back, oh, it's humanitarian, we've got to bomb them. They just move Al-Qaeda around all over the world, call them humanitarian freedom fighters if anybody resists them, and then the UN and NATO comes in and bombs the daylights out of them. But at least with the attack 
um, in the 90s against Serbia, they went and got congressional authorization for force. At least Bush with his illegal wars, because they were still wars of aggression, but he went and got the Congress to sign off on it, wasn't engaged in that form of brazen treason. Obama, less than 48 hours after the UN gave that resolution to invade, openly, in front of everyone, he ordered the U.S. military to start bombing and firing cruise missiles when out in the open, the U.N. had given the order and Obama hadn't even consulted Congress. This is a huge issue that's taking place here, my friends. And I hope you'll research the fact that Al-Qaeda is an arm of the globalist. Al-Qaeda is an arm of the New World Order. Al-Qaeda is a system that the New World Order uses to menace civilizations into giving up their liberties in the name of protection and also to go stir up revolutions and wars to then pose as freedom fighters so the globalists have an excuse to come in and take over countries. This is 21st century imperialism. And Al-Qaeda is the key set piece on this game of chess to bring us into the world government. They are a creation of the private banking cartels who are waging wars against the nation state and all basic liberties that defend the rights of the indigenous populations of the nation states. Al-Qaeda is CIA, is MI6, is Mossad, is Saudi Arabian intelligence. And they've caught British SAS dressed up like Al-Qaeda sh shooting at police in Basra to get Sunnis and Shiites killing each other. I mean, Al-Qaeda is the Swiss army knife of destabilization. They are that magic go-to tool that's used to foment the crisis so the globalists have the excuse to offer the solution. We've broken down one of the biggest modern ongoing hoaxes in history where you're un-American if you don't support the freedom fighters of Al-Qaeda. Well, I don't support them, and I don't agree with what Ronald Reagan said about them, saying that they were founding father material. I don't like Al-Qaeda. Now, you may hate me because I don't love Al-Qaeda. I'm not going to apologize. I'm sorry. I hate Al-Qaeda, and I hate their handlers even more. Ask yourselves, what are you doing in this time of great challenge? What are you doing to unlock minds? Okay, we checked. That's my report from March of last year. So a year and three months ago, there we are breaking it down. I thought now we would go over some new conspiracy theories. Admissions that the State Department is working with Al-Qaeda and landing them in Tripoli and now using them in Syria. But again, there's Paul Watson's article. It's got links to all of it in the London Telegraph. You name it, Al-Qaeda terrorist, airlifted from Libya to aid in Syrian opposition. And we link to a bunch of mainstream articles right there. But let's show you more of them here. Let's go to some of those actual, oh, oh, London Telegraph can't read them anymore. You know, as thousands of Al-Qaeda are publicly shipped in. We've got their Al-Qaeda flags, their black Al-Qaeda uniforms. Uh, it's all public. In, in fact, go back up there to the top right there so folks can see that. So people can see that headline and then go read it for themselves. Libya, the West and Al-Qaeda on the same side. Let's go to the next article here. Uh, of uh, sacrilege. Oh, Fox. Uh-oh, they're 9-11 truthers. Shock. America fighting on the side of Al-Qaeda in Libya. So you just saw me break down the whole history of this earlier. Webster Tarpley, Al-Qaeda does U.S. dirty work in Libya. He, he was breaking all that before it was in the L.A. Times and Fox and everywhere. But you know him. He's evil. I mean, you know, because being right is evil. Get that evil man off the screen. Leading Libya, Islamists met free Syrian army opposition group. And then the, these same guys were at Bilderberg this year. I was there covering it. And the media is forced to admit it existed. I thought it was a conspiracy and, and didn't exist when I was bad. I mean, all of this is building up to something. Don't worry, Obama, truth squads, uh, and beyond. And, and we have more of these reports. Just Al-Qaeda says they're going to kill all the Jews and expel or kill all the Christians in Syria. And uh, the big mainline neocons and liberals say, good. <laughs> I mean, they, they ethnically cleanse tens of thousands of blacks in Libya, and it's like, hell yeah. The only good black Libyan's a dead one. It's liberal. I mean, the Peace Prize president is bombing countries right now. He says the UN and NATO run Congress, and Congress said, yes, sir. So I want to apologize for ever questioning these known liars and uh, saying that Al-Qaeda worked with the bankers that have taken over our country. I mean, even though on record they do, I want to be trendy and accepted by the mainstream dying media. 
Oh, here's clips from uh, Obama deception three and a half years ago saying they would invade Libya and then actual footage of it happening. But again, I mean, you know what? Again, being right years beforehand, that's bad. Having an incredible track record of, uh, of accuracy, that's bad. And I want to apologize right now to you tonight that I was right again. Excuse me for breathing. Okay, again, from the Obama deception, saying they would invade Libya with Al-Qaeda and set up AFRICOM with the fake PR stunts like Kelly 2012. Uh, but again, you know, again, we're just absolutely dead on. I mean, there it is from, from three and a half years ago, Obama deception, and then the latest, uh, well, now it's up to 40,000 blacks they've slaughtered. Okay, moving away from Al-Qaeda being the Islamicist Global New World Order Brigade to destabilize and take over countries, the literal skeleton key to open any door you need. Use it against your own population to take their liberties. Use it against your enemies. Use it for anything. I mean, hell, if the New World Order needs their plumbing fix, they call Al-Qaeda. But again, I'm not supposed to talk about that. Let's shift gears. I saw the BBC two days ago say, that, that the UN wants to end national sovereignty because it's not good for globalism. But again, I'm the conspiracy theorist for reading their own documents and warning all these years. Now they're out in the open. That makes it even worse that I've been proven accurate. Uh, here's another one from Infowars.com with links to the UN's own website itself. It's got links to their official documents, kind of like they say they want to ban all firearms that Americans own. That's on the official UN website. But again, we're conspiracy theorists saying they might want our guns, even though they've disarmed people all over the world before they line them up and shoot and protect their property, as they admit they've done in Uganda and um, other areas of the world. All right, I'm going to stop being sarcastic here. Uh, the point is, UN receives Gen 21 funding from world governments and corporations. Well, yeah, world governments run by mega corporations who are anti-free market monopoly people. They all have set up this combine. They, the Rockefellers, the robber barons, set up the United Nations. These huge numbers give a sense of the scale and growth of investment going into sustainable development. That means they shut down all their competition and only globalists can operate in business. They are part of a growing global movement for change. Our job now is to create a critical mass, a irresistible momentum. That's the UN Secretary Ban Ki-moon in the UN document itself, getting billions of dollars outside of governments, uh, giving it to them because they're gonna get trillions total from taxpayers. A lot of the corporations want it. Government can shut down their competition and it can give them corporate welfare checks. Oh, but wait, I, I'm going to talk about a prominent libertarian later. No one knows who they are, but they say they're prominent. Who, who says that any discussion of corruption or shadowy groups, it does not exist. So just everything's fine here. Of course, we're going to play you that CNBC thing where they said, yeah, we're run by global government. Yeah, big banks run everything. We're their slaves. I mean, they say that in The Economist and Financial Times now. Financial Times writes articles constantly we've shown, saying, like, now for world government. It's authoritarian. It's been secret. We're enslaving you. Be assimilated or be destroyed. It's like Sauron telling, uh, Sauron telling Gandalf, you will join with Sauron. I mean, it's just, and it's like, I don't want to join with Sauron. And he says, Sauron does not exist then. <laughs> Imagine that. It, it, it's like... And again, I know Sauron doesn't really exist. It's a metaphor. It's an allegory. The New York Times will have fun with that one. Being deceptive for their audience. Good. Knock your stock down. Drive everybody to listen to, to us. That's good. Keep being deceptive. Keep saying you're the gatekeeper who controls everything. So uh, there is that report. Now, using the TPP is the next piece to renegotiate and expand NAFTA. And they had the SPP that got in all that trouble for making secret regulations without congressional approval. And so they, now they've moved to this new organization. And uh, we've got links to all the different documents with the big corporate uh, organizations that are sponsoring it, where they get all the government leaders from Mexico, the U.S., and Canada together to then agree to things outside of law with the bureaucracies. And I remember CNN about five years ago, that was when I was making um, Endgame, they actually went on the news and said, Ron Paul is insane, the Trans-Texas Corridor does not exist, and the NAFTA superhighways don't exist. We had all the Department of Transportation maps, billboards up in Texas saying Trans-Texas Corridor, they were going to charge you with transponders to drive down all major roads. 
And everybody in Texas was like, there's billboards, it's on the news. And CNN said, does not exist. Consp oh, you said so, okay. And then they started pulling the billboards, though, because, I mean, if CNN's going to say it doesn't exist, they're like, oh, hell, we better. Again, every time you confront them, they back off. Oh, you don't like the SPP? We'll come back five years later with the TPP. Oh, you don't like, oh, 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 uh, NAFTA's not going to get rid of your jobs. There's going to be no sucking sound. Well, what did Al Gore say on Larry King to um, the guy he was, uh, you know, they're demonizing Ross Perot. Ross Perot's like, listen, Canadians were paying on average about $30 an hour, U.S. $19 an hour. When they got rid of the trade agreement five years ago, it automatically equalized. But something happened, Larry. He, and, and you can pull these uh, debates up online on YouTube if you think I'm joking. Larry, the U.S. pay went from $19 to below $14, and the Canadian dropped from close to $30 down to about $17. This is not going to help workers. It's going to destroy the market. Henry Ford needed to pay his employees enough so they could buy cars, Larry. And then Al, Al Gore and his whole effeminate things like, oh, no, no, I'm conspiracy theory. This is a great deal, Larry. I mean, you can look, you can watch this whole debate. It's incredible. It's still on YouTube last time I checked. And of course, Ross Perot was absolutely right. Because Larry King's like, well, won't this help Mexican workers? Larry, let me, did you just hear what I just said? Canada's getting close to 30 an hour. The U.S. worker's getting 19. The U.S. worker drops down to 14. The Canadian worker drops down to below $20, $19. The Mexican worker getting an average of $1 an hour. He dropped, Larry. Larry, Larry, I got the numbers right here. It dropped, Larry. It's a giant sucking sound. It, it's a race to the bottom, Larry. You got to pay people so there is an economy, Larry. If not, it's all going to consolidate, which was the plan. How did, how did NAFTA and GATT? See, if Canadians were paid 100, that would suddenly raise Americans to 75 and Mexicans to 25. But see, globalism doesn't do that, and, it, it, and it's not meant to do that. They've admitted it's a consolidation to implode the world economy, get everybody in false debt, and then take it over as is happening now. And that clip is coming up. But again, being informed, having a memory, that's called being a conspiracy theorist. Larry, this is not helping Canadians, Americans, or Mexicans. It will lower it all. Giant sucking sound. But we didn't listen, did we? You're laughing. Do you like my Ross Perot invitation? Is that good? Well, no, we have a clip of that in Fall of the Republic with Al Gore, total Nelly. And Ross Perot's going, I got the documents. Look at this graph. And they're like shutting him down. And like Gore's doing this whole con artist confidence man act going. <laughs> and then he looks over. And of course, Ross Perot really won the debate, but the media all said he lost. So the average trendy went, well, I guess Al Gore's right. And Al Gore's like, you bet it is. And polar bears can't swim. Now pay me money. Mm. <laughs> There's no end to these con artists. If you don't believe, listen, some people say polar bears can swim. They're liars. They're conspiracy theorists. You know where that story comes from? They, they hunt in the spring on the ice packs because part of it always melts every year. They point a camera at it and tell you that it never has melted in all its history and, oh, my God, it's the end of the world. And then they show a polar bear family out there on a flow of ice, all fat as pigs, but they don't point that out. Sitting there and go, they're drifting out to sea to die. Give Al Gore and the world government money. And let us have a smart meter in your house. It'll, it'll take care of you and your family. And they never tell you. They never explain to you. They never tell you the truth. They're hunting beluga whales and seals on the ice packs and have been recorded swimming over 200 miles. None of the, Their numbers are up five-fold since the 1950s. Look it up for God's sakes. Oh, but that's a conspiracy theory. You know, they say in these training manuals, they say, they'll tell you to look stuff up. Oh, that's a real code word. Five-fold increase in North America. It's even bigger in uh, Siberia and areas of Northern Europe. I mean, they're like roaches running around. The, you know, the, the, the polar bears, I know they're cute and cuddly. Why don't you go out and play with one? <laughs> okay, enough of that. Let's move right along here to the same loving global system that's tested chemicals and biologicals on our own troops, killing them. Even though that's admitted, it's still not kosher to talk about it. Genetically engineered mosquito released into the wild. They're doing it in Florida, they're doing it in Africa, and they're doing it over in Europe.
And they're releasing them for dengue fever. They're releasing them uh, for, uh, well, you name it. And a lot of them have vaccines in them. That is already live or attenuated viruses or bacteria uh, to supposedly uh, give you uh, some type of acquired immunity to it. And God knows, even if they mean well with this, what it's doing. I mean, if hybridizing some simple grass can produce grass that off-gasses cyanide and kills everything around it, and they're feeding us corn that the bugs can't eat because it grows its own pesticide, I mean, the sky is the limit. So I thought I would just give you a clip from a few years ago of Bill Gates, the guy that says, if we get rid of grandma, we hire 10 teachers. Okay. And that little, you know, fake feminine thing he does. It's not even effeminate. You know what I mean. That little non-threatening psycho thing they do to make you think they're non-threatening, but it's really the opposite. Here he is at one of his little events releasing mosquitoes on the audience because this is the attitude uh, about, hey, I'm going to do sneaky stuff for your food and water and insects, and I'm going to engineer things where there's not anything you can do about it because I'm Bill Gates. And, uh, well, here he is. His wife in a few weeks is hosting a global forced abortion event in, the, in a fun group. But I mean, again, so what? They want little black kids to take shots because they weren't able to abort them, so they, they want them to live now. I mean, sure, his dad was the head of Planned Parenthood, they're eugenicists, but it doesn't matter. They're nice people. Come on. Everybody knows the elites are nice people. Holy mackerel. There's never been a bad elite you got to worry about. I mean, the founding fathers said that was what everything we had to be worried about, but, but I guess they're bad. I mean, because I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist. It's... I'm going to read a definition later of what the, not even Obama's truth squads have gone this far. So I'm going to, I'm going to give you our new truth leader. Step aside, Cass Sunstein. <laughs> we got, we got a new leader kind of shopping themselves around a little bit up there in the body window to the new world order, you know, and he's saying, Hey, he's like, I'll be your, I'll be your, I'll be your uh, Huckleberry. Let's go ahead and go to Bill Gates. What a nice little man. Now, malaria is, of course, transmitted by mosquitoes. Uh, I brought some here just so you could uh, experience this. We'll let, let those roam around the uh, <laughs> auditorium a little bit. There. There's no reason only poor people should have, have the experience. Uh, funding is up. Uh, there's new drug discovery going on. Our foundation has backed a vaccine that's going into phase three trial that starts in a couple months. And that should save over two thirds of lives if it's effective. And so we're going to have these new tools. Oh, he's totally in the business of abortion and death. And there's too many people in the actual foundation documents. And we could pull this up, I forgot. Uh, it was in CBS News Associated Press. Pull this up. 46,000 paralyzed children last year in India alone from the Bill and Melinda Gates UN-funded polio vaccine, which they admit then spreads real polio. But it's like, oh, there's a little side effect. We were having a few hundred cases that killed people, a few hundred that killed people a year. But now we got 46,000 dead, and about a third of those died. So, hey, have 20,000 dead, 22,000 dead, and, 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 you know, all these other people paralyzed or whatever. This is over a third. I mean, so what? I mean, Bill Gates is saving you. In fact, let's look at the conspiracy theory. Here it is. Mutant virus spreads in Nigeria. Yeah, yeah, no, that's the polio vaccine, CBS News. But that's a couple years old where it's accidentally killing everybody. Uh, yeah, yeah, there it is. It says spreading from the vaccine. Look right there. Show them the conspiracy theory, the, the, the horror of the admitted fact that we're right about this. No, no, that's shooting down... Yeah, yeah, that's shooting down aircraft to, uh, to blame it on uh, Iraq. Uh, no, 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 here it is. CBS News, polio. And it goes on to say it was caused by the vaccine used to fight it. But that's CBS News. That's old. No, 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 no. Type in right now 46,000 children paralyzed in one year in India from the vaccine. Something like vaccine side of, vaccine paralyzes 46,000 children in India. I mean, that's it. And that will pull it up for you. Oh, I'm sorry. We had trouble searching it. It was 47,500 cases. A national news reported on that. But if you scroll down deeper into the article, we have the links to the mainline news 
uh, and the different uh, government announcements of the number of people that have been damaged. And uh, that was just in one year over there, and a bunch of them died. And so you might want to go look into that. Okay, uh, now shifting gears uh, out of uh, those news reports, we will go to censorship that is taking place. And our next report deals with censorship. Here is an article, Obama Truth Team orders GoDaddy to shut down website information deemed maliciously harmful to the government. And that was dealing with his insider reports that Obama was gearing up for possible civil unrest. Well, that's in the Army Times. That's not really secret. So an FBI agent tells him they're getting ready for it. Most of this stuff's public. But in case any of you doubt this, here is a news piece from back in 2008 during the presidential campaign. This aired in Missouri. They had similar reports in other states saying, if you talk bad about Obama, we're going to arrest you. The police are going to decide if it's true or not. You've got to sue somebody for libel or slander or defamation. You don't just say, oh, the police say that isn't true. They say it's a conspiracy theory uh, that Obama wants your guns or whatever. So, so here's an example of the authoritarianism. And then Paul Watson's article on this goes through all these examples of where the Truth Squad currently are getting corporations to censor people. Really scary authoritarian type activity, similar to what we see in Australia, where they are th threatening $1.1 million Australian fines if you criticize the carbon taxes that went into effect. Here it is. Senator Barack Obama's presidential campaign is asking Missouri law enforcement to target anyone who lies or runs a misleading television ad during the presidential campaign. This is John Mills is live at the county election board in Maplewood. He's been learning more about which members of law, law enforcement are getting involved in this. John, tell us more about this. Prosecutors and sheriffs from across Missouri are joining something called the Barack Obama Truth Squad. Two high-profile prosecutors are part of the team. We met them this afternoon in the Central West End. They are Jennifer Joyce from the city, Bob McCullough, the St. Louis County prosecuting attorney. They will be reminding voters that Barack Obama is a Christian who wants to cut taxes for anyone making less than $250,000 a year. They also say they plan to respond immediately to any ads and statements that might violate Missouri ethics laws. We want to keep this campaign focused on issues. We don't want people to get distracted, and Missourians don't want to be distracted by these divisive character attacks. So we're here to respond to any character attacks, to set the record straight. Whether it is uh, directly attributable to the campaign or to one of the soft money operations, if they're not going to tell the truth, then somebody's got to step up and say, wait a minute, that's not true, this is the truth. Now, the Obama campaign tells News 4 that others, prosecutors and sheriffs, are also part of the team, including some from the Kansas City area and from rural parts of Missouri. We're also told the Truth Squad is expected to include Jefferson County Sheriff Glenn Boyer. Live in Maplewood, John... So, there you go. And they're running around doing the same stuff today. And you heard the teacher a month ago tell her students, you'll be arrested if you talk bad about Obama. And she was... Reinstated, they say, basically she's allowed to do that because you don't talk bad about our Lord and Savior. All right, let's uh, shift gears now to somebody who nobody has ever heard of, but I do this to give an illustration of the type of people that are out there who want to always control the debate and tell everybody what can be covered, what can't be covered. I say cover it all. Let people talk about whatever they want and then let other people counter it. But... Behind the scenes over the years, uh, I've been you know, made privy to things going on at Fox News. And I've been made privy to things going on at other channels around the country. We've been leaked MSNBC hit pieces before they come out. We have a lot of sources out there, people who understand they're working in propaganda and for reasons of conscience leak us things. And Fox News puts minders over their host normally Eddie Haskell types right out of college or right out of high school in some cases, who will follow a party line. And if you look at a show like Freedom Watch with Judge Napolitano, who's a good guy and I tried to promote him, I knew the backstory of that, that Ted Anderson, that that show wasn't even going to happen on Fox Business because they couldn't get enough sponsorship. So Ted Anderson uh, basically went into debt 
to be the number one sponsor of that with his gold coins and to make sure that Napolitano got on the air. And I don't even care about going on that show. I mean, he's a nice guy, Fox Business, 150,000 viewers max. My radio show's got millions of listeners a day. I'm up in New York, and they had invited me on the show. I was on The View and some other shows. They said, oh, please come over. And, 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 and uh, Napolitano said, well, you know, some of uh, Glenn Beck's people don't want you on. And uh, he went on to say, and some of my producers. I'm like, well, I don't care. Hey, great. It was good having lunch with you. Bye. I mean, I don't care about going on Fox Business. I turned down probably 10 radio interviews a day with bigger audiences than that. That's what the big audience is. I mean, I have Infowars.com. He's a nice guy, but it shows what a short leash he's on. But there's this glitz, this, this, this idea of, of, of glamour uh, to, to be on television. And its audiences are dwindling. It's a joke. It's a joke. I mean, Fox News called me up a few months ago and said, please come do a satellite interview. And I said, no. I mean, I don't want to go on there. I've turned them down dozens of times. And it's not about my ego turning down Fox News. It's that I'm sick of it. I'm tired of the emperor having no clothes, and I'm supposed to get down on my knees and kiss his butt. But then I saw on my desk today this article, and it just illustrated everything to me. Liberty champion, because anybody can write for the examiner, Liberty champion Peterson says conspiracy theories hurt movement. And it goes on to act like, this has got to be some PR piece written for him. It goes on to act like this Justin Bieber lookalike has a show on Fox. This is written today. And that he is currently the associate producer of Fox business show Freedom Watch and a powerful advocate for liberty. I mean, I didn't know this guy created sliced bread because I didn't know who he was. I don't even know if he's the producer flipping out about not wanting me on a show. Like, I care, pal. Like, 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 like your whole fake little world is the only thing that exists. And again, this guy's getting more attention here than he ever got anywhere. All right, let's continue here. You look at this, and it says Austin Peterson. Almost makes me ashamed for the name of my town where I live. Uh, a powerful advocate of liberty. So powerful, I've never heard of him told a raucous crowd at the Porcupine Festival in Lancaster, New Hampshire, that he believes the proliferation of conspiracy theories within the ranks of the liberty movement might be damaging to movement's potential. And he goes on to say, you should not believe there's anything nefarious in government. Listen to this. The term conspiracy theory, he defines it because he defines things. He's like Karl Rove. He controls reality. He's history's actor. The term conspiracy theory is used to indicate a narrative genre that includes a broad selection of not necessary related arguments for the existence of grand conspiracies. The term is frequently used to identify secret military. Oh, God, the military never did anything secret or anything corrupt or testing on their own troops or urban warfare drills or black helicopters that didn't exist and now they admit it for us or drones. Or secret banking. Oh, there's no secret backroom bailouts going on. Of political actions aimed at stealing power. No, nobody wants power. Big corporations don't want to have government given power. Money or freedom. Oh, government never steals freedom. I, I mean, this is our leader. This is our libertarian leader. This was the guy we're told, you know. It must not like being around Judge Napolitano, who's a pretty darn good guy. Because, I mean, <laughs> conspiracy theories are based on the notion that complex plots are put in motion by powerful hidden forces. That's what Thomas Jefferson talked about. Have you ever heard about a king's court, Versailles, the Roman courts? I mean, do you know anything? And he goes on to say 9-11 truthers are the worst. Well, I just did a whole piece about how Qaeda is being used by NATO and the U.S. government and the British government to attack Libya and take over and now Syria. But I'm supposed to ignore Gulf of Tonkin and all that because you know what? Eddie Haskell said so. I mean, he's got a glamour shot. So you want attention, Austin Peterson? I mean, you're kind of out there shaking your booty to Fox News and others that, hey, I hate people that question government and think there's corruption. I think it's a conspiracy theory. Give me a job. Maybe you will get a job there with the dinosaur media. But I mean, what 
a joke that he's figuratively out there advertising himself uh, with all the other, uh, you know, uh, pretty boys. <laughs> Maybe he's from a time machine. Maybe he's that guy. Leif Garrett, he teleported forward. A little bit of satire here, folks. It's just that imagine going to a libertarian event and saying, uh, there are people who believe there's big, powerful, corrupt groups and that uh, the, the, the government wants to steal power. Yes, yes, this is, this is damaging us. Well, yeah, you could just become, I guess, an auxiliary of the Republican Party, and that's what's happening right now. But hey, Leaf Champion, or whatever his name is, yes, Austin... Peterson, uh, I thought I would show you CNBC. Their audience is almost as small as Fox Business. It's a little over 100,000 viewers. Legends in their own minds, mouse that roars. It's all like a fake facade that they bring to the globalist advertisers and go, here, here, it's, it's $20,000 a minute to be on here, but we have less listeners than a regional radio show. So, I mean, it's designed for, like, you know, old guys, like the old NBC chairman, Welsh, you know, like, here, sir, uh, do an advertising thing. Eh, okay, eh. it's TV, big fancy facade with a bunch of carrion buzzards sitting there BSing the viewers. But now they have so few viewers that they've got to, and again, I've never said that about the Politano show. I wanted it to go big. I wanted Fox to go in that direction. But <laughs> since they're getting blackmailed, over, uh, you know, the spying and stuff in England, and now he's having to split the company up and all that, and Murdoch could get arrested. They are fully under Obama and the globalist and George Soros' thumb. So, uh, sad issue, I now digress. The point here is that, listen, uh, Leaf Champion, I think that's his new name, our, ch listen, champion that no one ever heard of, who did nothing, that told us we shouldn't question power, Mr. Champion, diametrically opposed the Founding Fathers, Will you please, since you had a glamour shot at the mall, even looks like it was taken at the mall, uh, can you please tell us what we're allowed to talk about? Perhaps I should hire this guy and have him sit here. Uh, tell me, uh, Austin, Peter, son, uh, tell me, can I cover this, this article out of the London Telegraph or maybe the LA Times where Al-Qaeda works for the US government? Is that allowed? He'd be like, no, not credible. Okay, um, there's an illegal checkpoint down the road here. Uh, that's kind of scary. No, not scary, safe. Doesn't exist. Uh, let's go ahead and play. And this went on for like four and a half minutes, but here they are. We have the one clip where that one guy says the Federal Reserve is out of control. All the others on the show are like, well, they do run things. We are their slaves, but we're lucky they're their slaves. And one guy's got a bow tie, so you got to listen to him. Because again, they control reality. So when even mainline CNBC is having to get more like Alex Jones, where are a lot of libertarians going? They are listening to all these PR people and low-level hatchet men that come out and say, Hi, you want to be powerful? You want to get something done? Hate Thomas Jefferson. All right, let's, that's enough. I, I'm having too much fun with this. We're going to come back with a big Gerald Salente interview and then Billy Corrigan. Another evil guy that thinks for himself. So here is that clip from CNBC. Now, the question is, do we all work for central bankers? That's what I want to address to our guest tonight. Is this global governance at last? Is it one world, the central bankers in charge? Jim, Jim Urio, aren't we all just living and dying for what the central banks do? Aren't we all just counting on the fact that there's a Bernanke put, put and that we won't go any lower than, say, 5% uh, down from here? Well, of course we are, because if we look at the economic data, there's nothing to get excited about in that. We are absolutely slaves to central banks because and we'd love to be slaves of the economy but the economic numbers continue to do nothing but trend low yeah and listen to what the fed did this weekend i think they really screwed up here they said that we're going to do this operation twist through the end of the year in other words they're going to create uncertainty about what happens after operation twist right at the same time that the fiscal cliff kicks in yeah we really want all that uncertainty. they want yeah. uncertainty it's in all their public documents but i'm not supposed to read those the system's so arrogant, they admit all this, but think we're not going to read it. And then their minions won't cover it because they'll get fired if they do. They want the fiscal uncertainty. <coughs> that is the whole plan here. And under that article, we have that video posted at InfoWars.com. We have more than 30 articles 
posted with every mainstream publication saying global government run by mega banks, you're going to pay carbon taxes to them. And do I get calls saying, hey, you predicted it, you're right, my God, you were accurate. What else do you want to tell us? No, instead, I get to hear about porcupine festivals where nobodies get up and pontificate to everyone. And by the way, this goes on behind the scenes where they go to radio, TV people, you name it. And they tell them, hey, don't go there. I've talked to national TV, national radio host, off record, I'm not going to say names. And they go to them and they say, you want to excel in your job? Don't talk about this. So what does it mean now that they're having to talk about the real world on CNBC? Well, they want to spin it. They want to get out in front of it. They know this stuff is now known. They know they have no audience to speak of anymore. They're a joke. They're a mouse that roared. And so they've got to cover a lot of this and admit it now because the people are getting wise to reality. And again, I spent more time. This guy ought to send me a paycheck even talking about him. You know, some guy who doesn't even have a job now running that over there, running around, you know, advertising that uh, he doesn't, you know, believe in, uh, you know, not trusting government uh, and that it's evil to even think so. Yeah, yeah, there's just one block of the articles where we uh, show the mainstream media admitting world government. And then scroll down, scroll, scroll down, because there's a whole nother block beneath that. <laughs> just, but that doesn't exist. You've got to understand. It's a conspiracy theory. Ooh. All right. Gerald Salente coming up, and then Billy Corrigan of Smashing Pumpkins. We'll be right back after this quick break. It's InfoWars Nightly News. Have you been to InfoWarsShop.com lately? Express your inner patriot with these brand new InfoWars t-shirts. Say it loud with the InfoWars bullhorn shirt. Or educate the sheeple with the Bill of Rights shirt. Grope the public's mind with the TSA shirt. And with this shirt, you can let the dark side know of the Rebel Alliance's power. All available at InfoWarsShop.com. And we are back. We're about to talk to Gerald Salente, one of the top trends researchers uh, in the world. And we'll talk about uh, his latest issue that's coming out and the fact that his predictions of QE3 are coming true. The Federal Reserve says they're getting very close and the collapse of Europe is only accelerating after the bailout of Greece. We'll talk to him here for the next 30 minutes or so. And then we're going to premiere here without commercials the Billy Corrigan interview that I did. And let me tell you, it is bombshell. He covers it all. The police state, the New World Order, GMO, the huge awakening that's happening. Billy Corrigan of Smashing Pumpkins, his record shooting up the charts right now, Oceania. He's going to be joining us. But first off, one of my favorite guests, my mother's favorite guest, Gerald Salente, joining us uh, from up there in Kingston, New York, where he is helping kick off the second American Revolution. I saw your press release uh, that's up at uh, the Trends Journal. Uh, tell us about that. Tell us what you're doing. You're putting your money where your mouth is and your blood, sweat, and tears, Gerald. Yeah, I'm buying into America, the real America, not what it's become. And I bought a building on the most historic corner in the United States, the only place on each corner where there's a pre-revolutionary stone house. And Kingston, you know, was one of the first capital of New York State. And the British actually burnt the place down. And a lot of the revolution happened here. The Constitution was brought through here. So I believe if this is where the first American Revolution also began, why not start the second one? But this one won't be of bullets and armies. It'll be of mind and heart. And again, this is the real America, not the America that they've stolen from us. And so what I'm doing is I'm, my campaign is stay home, don't vote. People are going to vote for a lesser of two evils. What self-respecting person would vote or have anything to do with an evil? Lesser, greater, it's evil. 
And what, look what's going on, Alex. You know, I, I've been around for a long time. I began my career, by the way. I used to run political campaigns in Westchester County uh, when I had a graduate school. I was the assistant to the secretary of the New York State Senate. And you know the list of contributors to the Trends Journal. I mean, it's Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, former assistant treasury secretary under Reagan. I mean, we're guys that have been around and know the story. Anybody to me that votes in this election is going to be an accessory to the crime because it's two crime families that are running the show. The Republicans and the Democrats, Gambinos, Bananos, you can call it anything you want. Now, let's put this in perspective. I said, you know, oh, by the way, I also taught at St. John's University, American Politics and Campaign Technology back in 1972. It was one of the first courses on how to run campaigns. So I know a little bit about this. Never, never in modern history has there been such a downbeat election as the 2012. Who cares? There's no excitement in the air. People really could care less about who's running. Go back to 2008, it was a whole different atmosphere. It's because they now know it's a fraud. Correct me if I'm wrong, the illusion has never been more revealed. Congress has a 9% approval rating. People know they're bought and paid for by the same mega banks. Is that what's happening? You got it. You nailed it. No one cares. It's the presidential reality show, and people are tuning out. So my election campaign, if you will, is stay home, don't vote. If 40% or less of the people go, don't go to, go to the polls, we could call this an illegitimate election, because after all, we have illegitimate candidates representing us, whether it's Obama or Romney. And here's another thing. Go back in time. Do you know what Obama's approval rating is today? It's about 46 percent, 43, 46. Do you know what, at the same time during his reelection campaign, Dwight D. Eisenhower's was? 72 percent. And Dwight D. Eisenhower wasn't on the campaign trail. He was back in the White House. You name me any CEO whether it's yourself, me, anybody that runs a business, could you imagine being away from your business all of the time as the nation is going to crap? It's the biggest business in the country, and this clown's out there shaking hands, rallying support, and raising money. He's never in the White House. And going all on all these different TV shows, like The View and the rest of it, uh, hamming it up with people. The truth is they're total puppets. And Jesse Ventura's new book, Democrats and Republicans, breaks it down for you and I and most people. We're like, yeah, we already know that. Tell us something we don't know. But for the general public, there's still 30, 40, 50 percent, depending on how you look at it, that do buy in to the structure. Uh, what do you expect for them to do as things just continue to slide into this depression? And if Mitt Romney gets in, if he doesn't change things? Or do you think it's going to be Obama? Well, we believe it's going to be Obama. Uh, we've said this back in October uh, in 2011. We came out with our forecast. I mean, anything could happen. But we see it as Obama again. I mean, Romney, I mean, this guy's stiff. He's colorless. He's humorless. And he's, oh, and he has a, what is he going to get him on? He's not going to get him on health care because it's Romney care. What's he, he doesn't have any economic plan. His only economic plan is don't tax the very rich. Yeah, I mean, no, he's not going to, we don't see him going to anywhere. And if he does get in, what's he going to do? More of the same. It's a two-headed, one-party system. As I've said before, it's like electing somebody as the president of a country club. They're arguing, should we expand the tennis courts or build another swimming pool? I mean, these guys are totally out of touch with the people. So it's not going to make any difference who gets in. But here's where we see it going. First of all, they're going to, Obama is going to blame what's going on in Europe as the problems for the United States. The prostitutes will continue to buy it. Number two, it's war talk. Oh, do they love war talk? 
I loved Hillary Clinton the other day coming out against Syria for shooting down a Turkish plane that went into its territory. And that's the way it was first reported. How brazen the act is. What an inhumanitarian regime the Assad government has. Hey, Hillary, you want to talk about brazen and, and inhumane? How about starting wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, killing millions of people? Does that sound inhumane and brazen? How about Libya? How about Libya? Hey, Hillary, how about your husband? You remember the Wag the Dog episodes when he was caught with Monica Lewinsky. I didn't have sex with that woman. Bombs away over Baghdad. You forgot that one? Or How bombing the, a the aspirin factory with cruise missiles uh, whenever some bad news came out. Or bombing uh, the capital of Serbia with DU and tripling birth defects. What's amazing is they're using Al-Qaeda against Libya. They're using Al-Qaeda now against Syria. And if your Cessna gets off track and goes over a military base, they shoot you down. They admit they're sending jets in uh, from Turkey. Turkey's a NATO ally. They've said they're getting ready to attack them. They shoot it down, and Turkey's like, if your troops get anywhere near your own border, we're going to attack you. They're clearly trying to start a war. I'll never forget, it came out in the White House and Downing Street memos, that Tony Blair and Bush met, and they said, let's paint up U.S. aircraft like U.N. aircraft and have them fly real low and try to get Saddam to shoot them down so we have a pretext. I mean, that's exactly what they're doing here. And then they show one dead girl, don't even prove that Assad did it, and say, we've got to invade now. I mean, you're right. It's, it's so ridiculous. And that's how they'll get the people's mind off the economic problems, particularly in Europe. And so that's where we see it going. And again, you know, look at the facts. The Gulf of Tonkin, the psychopaths made that one up, never happened. Hey, how about those weapons of mass destruction and ties to Al-Qaeda? Hey, it didn't happen, but we went to war, stayed there for what, eight or nine years, killed a million people, ruined the lives of how many of our soldiers, and, and spent a trillion bucks? So what? Hey, take it easy. And now they're going to go in, it looks like, into Syria. Here's a fact. When Obama was down in the polls, go back to April of 2011, when Donald Trump was on his case, all of a sudden, we wake up on a Monday morning, they got Osama bin Laden. Obama's poll numbers skyrocketed up to 60% plus. It's the oldest game in the book, and they keep playing it over and over again, and the gullible people buy it. So what I'm saying is enough. We know this game, we've seen it before, and that's why I'm helping to launch with you and others the second American revolution. We have to change the system. You're right. Gerald, I want to get into that, but first I want to get into your prognosis on Europe because I read the Trends Journal, uh, I interviewed Dr. Roberts, who's also part of your team. You guys have been absolutely spot on on what's happening, so have People like Webster Tarpley, uh, Bob Chapman, God bless his, uh, and the rest of oh, his soul, yeah. have been so on target. And it's really amazing how on target we've been. But uh, the guys actually found that article I just mentioned. Here it is, London Guardian. Uh, we'll put it on screen up there, showing people the headline. Confidential memo reveals U.S. plan to provoke an invasion of Iraq, Saturday, June 20th, 2009. When this came out, Leaked by British intelligence, the White House said, yeah, it's true. We're going to arrest whoever released it. And it was a plan. So this shows the U.N. was part of the, the, the scam. Bush told Blair the U.S. had drawn up a uh, provocative plan to fly a U-2 reconnaissance aircraft painted in U.N. colors over Iraq with fighter cover. Bush said that if Saddam fired at the planes through an area that was illegal for them to fly, this would put the Iraq leader in breach of U.N. resolutions. And then they'd have the U.N. claim it was their aircraft as well. But don't worry, we'll just kill a U.S. pilot. Now again, it turns out they didn't even need that. They just went in anyways. Turns out when they were telling Saddam, you're allowed to leave, they had jets ready to kill him if he tried to leave. And people say, oh, well, he's a bad guy. The CIA put him in power for folks that don't know their history books. Here is an example, and I see this, this Turkey situation 
where they're flying their jets, F-16s, their pilots on suicide missions into their country to get killed. They admit they flew into their country. Here's another false flag. And instead of the head of NATO getting in trouble or the president of Turkey getting in trouble, no, the system treats us like we're low-grade morons and shovels this at us. I want your take on that, but, but again, Al-Qaeda on record, we did a whole report on it earlier in the show tonight, has been used to overthrow Libya and Syria, complete with Al-Qaeda uniforms and flags. And then I'm told I've got to have the TSA abuse my wife and children, or Al-Qaeda is going to jump out like a jack-in-the-box from there, you know, behind the curtains over there, uh, and is going to kill us all. I mean, I mean, how dumb do they think we are? Well, they're plenty dumb. Uh, I mean, look at, look at the people that are going to vote for Obama and Romney, and they're going to believe in them. So they, they know that how stupid so many people are. And, and let's go back to the Al-Qaeda. Let's go back a little more. Remember that wonderful Mujahideen? You remember the one that, that Jimmy Carter started paying off to fight the Russians in Afghanistan and that Reagan accelerated? Oh, you remember them. Uh, what's his name? Bin Laden's group. They do it all the time. When are people going to grow up and understand that you have a bunch of psychopaths, sociopaths, and losers that are destroying our lives? And why hasn't in, in, it, with, you put up that article from The Guardian Let's go back to the bigger issue. How come there have been no war crime tribunals for Bush, for Cheney? Oh, Condoleezza Rice is back on the news. She was a big hit at the latest Romney event. Yeah, that shows you how bad it is when someone like her gets press. How about Blair? Where are the war crime tribunals? You or I, like you mentioned, a Cessna goes out of their little zone, bam, you knock them down. Any one of us break the rules a little bit. Boy, the strong arm of the law really shoves it up to us. But hey, start a war for fake reasons. Come up with the evidence how they were planning it. Hey, let's let bygones be bygones. Don't you know who Bush's daddy was? Don't you know that every one of these people, Alex, are better than you, better than me, and better than anyone listening? Except, of course, you trolls out there, CIA hacks, and a bunch of military losers that are waging wars that you can't win that are listening in. Other than them, they're all better than we are. Speaking of that, uh, there are literally hundreds of articles now where the Pentagon admits they're waging domestic psyops. They have accounts with YouTube, Google, everywhere with fake posters. We've tracked the IPs on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com where the same military IP address is posing as eight people having conversations in live time. This is computers. They now have computers. They admit they do, ca uh, countering us. I mean, this is just outrageous. It's it not only is, it's more than outrageous, it's deadly. Let's look at what's going on here. Look how many of our men and women's lives have been lost and ruined. All the families that have been touched. I'm, I'm going down the street the other day and I see a young man with his leg, one leg, lost it in Iraq. And, and nobody, oh, so what? So what? It was a useless war. Just like you said, sending these guys on suicide missions in Turkey, they don't care how many lives they expend to get, their, to get off on their sociopathic trips. These are sick people, and they're ruining our lives. They're destroying this country. So let's look what's going on. There is no salvation in Europe. They can't save it. Tomorrow's a big day. Mario Monti, you know, the technocrat over there that was supposed to save the day in Italy that came in for Berlusconi. Last week, he said, if they don't fix it, everything's lost. Well, Mario three card Monti, we're going to prove that he was wrong because it's going to continue to go on. Tomorrow's a big, uh, this Thursday is a big day. There's going to be a lot going on in the Eurozone. They have to come up with another scheme to pull this thing out. What are they going to do? I don't know. Gold prices, by the way, are going down. People are saying they're going down because we're in a deflationary cycle. Now, nah, has nothing to do with that. Gold prices should be going up because the euro is worthless. 
the dollar is worthless, the yuan, the yen, the real, they're all worthless. They're dumping money in to pump the system up. So I'm in gold long term. I don't believe this is a bubble. This is very different from when it collapsed in 1980. I was trading gold back then. Whole different world situation. Hey, I'm, I'm doing the same thing because everywhere they're devaluing currencies but creating a real depression so that the inflation doesn't get too bad visibly. But long term, either they come out with a new currency and, re and redenominate gold or gold and silver are going straight up. I mean, that is a mathematical certainty. We've already seen gold go down $500, $600 a few years ago. Then it shot back to heights even greater. But I'm not in gold and silver to even make a profit. It's an emergency backup because I know these paper dollars are going the way of used toilet paper. You got it. And, and also, you said something very important. You're not in gold and silver to make a profit. You're in there for security and safe haven. You're in there for the long haul, and for me, my golden years, which are getting closer all the time. So I'm not in it for a profit. What do I do profit? My business is my profit. My trends journal is my profit. I don't invest gambling, what they call investing. I don't, I don't gamble to make a profit. I put my, my money where my mind and heart is, not, not speculating. So in going back to what's going on in Europe, Alex, there's no way out. They're not going to come out with a euro bond. The Germans are not going to let it happen where they put all the bonds in one package and come up with an even price. The best they're going to come up with is maybe some kind of plan so that when you put your money in the banks, you don't lose it. But they're not going to be. Oh, 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 Spain. I love the Spanish, that guy, Rejoy. No, wait a minute. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interrupt you because I don't have a big crew. You don't have a huge crew. We're lean and mean. But I, I could go back five years ago when I first started having you on, or I guess it's about six now, time flies. Or I could go back and get Robert six, seven years ago, or Chapman ten years ago. I could go back. But I remember you three years ago, four years ago, saying, you watch, it's going to spread to Europe, it's going to start with the pigs, it's going to go through uh, you know, Greece and then into uh, Spain and then Portugal and then and right down the line, it has been exactly as you guys have said, and each time, you know, here are the mainstream media people who never get it right on purpose because they're lying. Here are you guys out there that are doing the real research, and you're explaining they're going to get another bailout, that won't fix it, another bailout, that won't fix it. I mean, it, they don't even wait a week now till demanding a new bailout to the bankers. So, break down, you predicted exactly what's happening so far, and now tell us what's coming next in Europe, how you see this shaking out. Well, again, let's go back also. The euro is only online, what, 10 years? And it can't hold it together in 10 years. It's only 10 years old, and it came in at the height of globalization. It can't make it through bad times. So go back to Spain. What did they say three weeks ago? Ah, we're going to need 19 billion bucks. We'll get bail out all the banks. Then 100 billion. Now it's 100 billion. So 100 billion euros, 125 billion. And now they're asking for 300 billion more. It's like every day it becomes a new number. Exactly. And that's, and that's only Spain. And then there's Italy. Italy's debt's much bigger than Spain's, more than two, two and a half times. They can't get out of it. There's no way out. So what they're going to do, again, NATO, we're talking about NATO. What's with this NATO baloney? NATO is there. They put it in place to protect us from them Soviet unions. Remember that one? NATO wasn't supposed to go into Libya. NATO's not supposed to go into Syria. This is the world criminal organization that's put together a global army. And they're going to get our mind off this by taking us to more war. They cannot solve the European debt crisis. And like you said, where's the money going? It's going to the banks. Who made up this baloney up that we have to save the money changers? Who made this up that if the banks fail, we all die? Hey, guess what? I can't go out of business. I want a bailout. If people can't get the Trends Journal, the whole world will go to crap. I mean, it's the same thing. And oh, and look at this one. What was the average increase for these losers, these Jamie Diamonds? These, these guys at Citigroup and all the rest, they got 12% on average bonuses, pay raises 
for bringing their companies oh, that's another and point. the country down. That's another point. Not defending communist China. They have their own problems and they're in bed with the globalists. But you and others have pointed out when they put melamine in kids' milk, they just execute them, the corporate leaders. I notice they're taking all the fancy cars away from government bureaucrats because China is having budgetary cuts. But here, it's more caviar, more jets, more $500 a night for even Austin City officials when they go to New York to sell us out. I mean, it is amazing how, as Rome burns, they are literally fiddling. Again, we have to understand who the they are. The they, as I've said over and over again, are the same people we couldn't stand in high school and college. The ones that wanted to be the class presidents and head of the student councils. The suck-ups, the brown noses, the glad-handers, the insincere. That's who they are. They follow their career path and they're destroying us and people applaud them. They wait online to see them. They close down entire cities, airspace, stop the trains when they come into town and they're bringing the entire global situation to another world war and we're letting them do it. Oh, you know that woman on the on the, uh, the 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 bus, the school bus monitor, who the kids you know ridiculed, and she's crying, and she gets you know a couple of hundred thousand dollars. If that was my mother or my aunt Zizzy, may their souls rest in peace, any of them. If that those kids started giving them any bit of crap, they would have laid these kids out. Who are you talking to? That's what would have happened in the old days. But the people in this country have become nothing more than a bunch of pansies. Well, by the way, you always talk about dressing nice, and I've been so busy. I've, I've been sold on an idea that I've got to respect myself even more because I kind of saw it as dressing fancy puts other people down. But now I understand it's the opposite, like the old timers. They always tried to dress really nice, so I've got to go out and get some new suits and stuff because my others are worn out or, or, or too big now because I've lost some weight. But the point is I do intend to try to really start dressing a lot nicer and I'm and I'm and my wife always does it but with my children as well because a we've got to separate ourselves from people that don't care because even poor people a long time ago tried to dress nice and B point out hey we're important we've got manners because society is completely degenerating I mean you go to the store now people's pants are hanging down they're oh. slobs uh, everywhere society's degenerating and the system counts on us not having any respect for ourselves because even when I was in school, uh, you know, 25, 30 years ago when it was things like middle school and uh, elementary school, I was dressed with a button-up shirt and jeans and my shoes were clean and I wasn't fancy and everybody was so much more respectful and we weren't perfect, mind you. But nowadays, they've purposefully taken all discipline out of parents out of people in the neighborhood, out of anybody, so that now everybody's a bunch of mindless, crazy animals. I mean, I'm really worried about society because you've got one group, you know, that's getting into dressing better, having better food, being more cultured, getting back to basics, and then you've got others who are just headlong turning into animals. You got it, and, and that's the ones we have to watch out for because, you know, just to make the point, you know, people, you know, I'm not talking about going out and buying, exp you could buy very nice clothes at a very affordable price. You go to Goodwill, Salvation Army, people that work with me, friends I have, they no, all the do it. No, the point is people don't care anymore about they looking don't care. nice. That's exactly it. The other thing is, it doesn't cost anything to feel good. You make yourself feel better. I get emails all the time, people saying, thank you for, for, for bringing this up. Because here's my, you know, every day I meditate, or else I go out of my mind, all the crap I have to read and analyze it. And there's five things I say every day. Courage, dignity, respect, integrity, and passion. When you have those five elements, you don't take anybody's crap. And you do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And that's what we've lost to me in this country. We've lost our dignity. We've lost our courage. Again, that woman crying, well, well, well. yes, 68 years old. You're only three years older than me. As I said, if that was my mother or aunts, they wouldn't take that crap from little kids. They've lost their integrity. 
they've lost their passion. And one other thing, you mentioned about being poor and looking well. Anybody could do it, doesn't cost anything. Go on the internet, look up the Great Depression, look at the way the people dressed, look at the way they dressed. Even if they were poor, they looked respectable. It's self-respect, and again, that's what the intellectual revolution that we're waging is, one of the heart and the mind. It's about the individual rising up to greater heights. It's as simple as that. Because when you, when you do, you don't take anybody else's crap. You don't give it, and you don't take it. Could you imagine if Romney, Obama, Santorum, Gingrich, any of these clowns, uh, uh, McCain, McCain, they started coming in and laying down their line on us and saying, this is what you have to believe, and this is what you have to do. Hey, so listen, Jack, take it easy, man. Don't save your lines for somebody else. You know, plays well with the kiddies on The View, but it doesn't play so well here. So to me, it goes back to self-respect, dignity, courage, integrity, and passion. Well, that's another point. Uh, we've gone out before and hung up flyers just to show people the power of grassroots, you know, defiling the dictator Obama as he launches wars, as he engages in Fast and Furious, as he does all this stuff outside the Constitution. And people can't believe we have the courage to go hang up signs. They, or, or to protest Bilderberg, they say this must be fake. And I think, my God, they think I'm a hero because I would go hang a sign up or go protest a world leader? That is really pathetic compared to, I use the example, when my grandfather was flying uh, you know, Liberators and B-17s over Europe, at the first of the war, half the people died flying their 22 missions. But my grandfather survived. And I think of the benchmark of courage. Somebody like my grandfather who would fly over Europe up against the Germans and had a lot of his buddies die and would never talk about it, by the way. He would never talk about what he did versus people today who think it's heroic to go bullhorn some limousine of globalists going into a meeting. And it's like, I'm not a hero. In fact, I should do more. I just can't believe the benchmark in taking action is so incredibly low. People are literally spectators, Gerald. Yes, they are. And, and then there's the other element that we really have to be concerned about. What's one of the headlines today about the increase of violent crime in Chicago, for example? Oh, it's incredible. Yeah, so now what we have is a, as society, and, it, and I'm not making these numbers up, the gap between the rich and the poor is the widest in the United States and any of the industrialized nations. What did people lose? 40% of their net income since the, since the net wealth, since the um, net wealth, since the uh, uh, recession began. Oh, wait. So now, now you look at the whole, look at a whole section of society. Kids, their mothers, you know, are whacked out on, on crack. They don't know who their father is. They're whacked out on meth or whatever else. They have no education, no skills, and there are hundreds, tens and tens and tens and tens of millions of them. You think it's going to be a problem? And you know what the answer is going to be from the morons? We got to crack down on crime, I tell you. Oh, yeah, right. Keep spent. I got it. Let's start another war. You think Detroit looks bad? Let's not even give them a penny. No money for education. By the way, the education system stinks but we need to educate those who need it the most, not to spoil kids to me, the kids that need it the most. So here's my, one of the things that I'm going to be working more and more on. I've realized that society goes into a direction because of role models, whether it's, uh, 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 look, you know, <laughs> let's, let's look like a moron, it's a role model, whether it's the Kardashian, whether it's a Justin Bieber, whether it's a Britney Spears, whether it's 50 cents, no sense, whatever it might be. Well, no, the be. social engineers know what they're doing. They're giving us these punk, disheveled, pathetically ignorant role models, so we'll be like that, so we're it's, easy to control. You got it. So one of the directions that we're moving in with the Trends Journal and the Trends Research Institute is to work to develop new role models. That's where it has to change. And to me, it has to change through entertainment in, in one of the major factors. 
because you know that your audience, my audience, the people that we know, we're only a, you know, we're maybe 10% of society. The other people are Jersey shored out. Even that I know a name like Snooky is disgusting. So to, it has to come also from other avenues. So as we're launching the second American revolution, that's one of the avenues that we're going to be launching it through entertainment. Very exciting. Gerald, uh, I want to get back into Europe and what's happening over there and also get your forecast on the militarization of police. In fact, let's just do that now. And then I have this clip off of Kudlow where they're admitting that foreign bankers have dominated and hijacked America. And then the guest go down the line and agree, yes, we absolutely are slaves to international bankers. But then, oh, it's kind of a good thing as the Federal Reserve knows best. So it's just really off the charts to see it becoming this transparent. But first, you mentioned the degeneration of society. They were getting ready for this derivatives collapse over a decade ago. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. They, uh, they understood the Ponzi scheme. They knew where it was going. The issue is they may have even overdone it in their fraud. Uh, and so that's, I think, where the debate lies. But now in St. Louis, Missouri, and everywhere, and I've talked to police, but also uh, the head of the Army, the Secretary of the Army, actually, um, just uh, two weeks ago in the CFR wrote that, yes, they're going to have 4,000 armed troops, a brigade, regular Army or Marines in every major city, and they're going to run checkpoints. And then suddenly, oh, they're rolling around, and the news is like, oh, people like it. It fights crime. It's the rollout of martial law beginning, and it's in the big black neighborhoods everywhere. So you, you ship the drugs in, you dumb the people down, you screw up the education, you send everybody to jail so they come back, and that's the only education they got is from a prison. It is what it is. But they're going to sell the entire police state, and I said this a decade ago, and here it is happening, first off of the imploding inner cities, predominantly around black folks. But then as the rest of society implodes, it's going to happen to everybody. But then they sell people, oh, that's just the black neighborhood. I'm getting calls and emails, and, and I see comments on my videos online saying, Alex, yeah, they're getting ready for martial law because of, you know, what's happening in Chicago, these gangbangers. Well, why did MTV and this culture magnify this? My point is that they're going to do it in these areas and then expand it out everywhere else. And here it is. Martial law is being quietly put in place. Uh, that's my analysis. What's your take? Oh, it's one of our top trends for 2012. And you know, we're on the same page. We said as the economy continues to worsen, they're going to continue to take more of our rights away. It began, I mean, we saw it coming. Well, you reported on it heavily, so did I, about the National Defense Authorization Act signed by El Presidente of Los Estados Unidos. I say that because we become a banana republic on New Year's Eve when no one was, was watching. And what did that allow it to do? Among other things, the, it, it repealed the Posse Comitatus Act of what, 1878? Yep. Which allows the military to perform police duties. Wonderful. Oh, and what's that new executive order that El Presidente signed in March that allows him to declare martial law at, quote, a potential threat? Yeah. No, it's all in place. And so what's happening is that America's turned into a fascist state. It's right in front of us. And you pointed it out well. They put these stupid people on the air, the prostitutes, well, I'm really glad that the military is here because now, you know, they could stop the crime. They put one after another on. And the same thing happened in New York last week when the guy forgot to plug in the metal detector at JFK and they brought the airplanes back off the tarmac. And somebody, somebody from San Diego said, well, better safe than sorry. When was the last time an airplane blew up? No, no, they're selling this idea that if there aren't perfect checkpoints and troops, Al-Qaeda's going to get you. Meanwhile, Al-Qaeda publicly works for them. You said it. You gave the details. They're in Libya. They're in Syria. Began in Afghanistan. Exactly. Well, I'm telling you, it comes down to something very simple, and people don't want to recognize it. We have sociopaths and psychopaths destroying our lives. 
It's no, it's no more than that. And people are tolerating it. They don't know better than we do. And here, just for the track record, everything they touch, they turn to crap. You want to start a war? Could you ever win one? Oh, you're going to bail out and spend trillions of dollars to help your buddies at the bank? Hey, it didn't work. Oh, Obama, you said that by 2010, that's right, 2010, the unemployment rate would be down to 7%. Gee, it's over 8%. What went wrong? They, one thing they do, a Bush going into And those Iraq. are all cooked numbers. Let me ask you this question, and, and then I want to get to this world government clip from Kudlow and CNBC, uh, legends in their own minds, as they almost have no audience now. That's another issue. Uh, but what do you see happening long term? Because history shows the attempts to start war with Russia isn't going to go well. The attempts to set up this police state isn't going to go well, because as the troops go bankrupt as their money won't take care of their wives and kids back home they're waking up uh, as they're meant you know told to serve five six seven tours it's not working i mean i don't see this working for the white shoe boys and i already see the white shoe boys as you describe them buying armored redoubts in the caribbean and europe and the cook islands and, and australia so I, I already see a lot of them leaving so that doesn't bode well for their structure if they're already uh you know getting a get out of town plan. Well, you know, they had the wherewithal to do whatever they want at any time, so they could stay or leave. They're just making, you know, contingency plans. It's coming down. The whole thing is collapsing. As you pointed out, you know, the troops in St. Louis and everywhere else they're going to be putting them, all the checkpoints we have now, the new legislation that I've seen you reporting on, the House legislation that allows the TSA now to be, to be everywhere. That, that they're going to be pushing through. So they're putting everything into place. You make the point about will the troops follow orders? I recently received a email from a, uh, a soldier from the uh, former Czech Re Czechoslovakia saying how they refused to obey orders. They were young guys and they wanted them to put down riots and rebellions and they wouldn't do it. Will the American soldiers and police do the same thing here? Will they fire on their brothers? From what I see now, I'm afraid they will. Because I see what they do with the Occupy movements. I see how they bash people to pieces, as we've seen the clips. The police, they, they kill that homeless guy in California. So I'm afraid that the nation has degenerated so much morally that they will fight against us. And I'm not saying that in anything that's so far out to think. I mean, after all, here we are today, you and I talking to each other. How many American soldiers got killed in Afghanistan today? How many Americans would killed other people in Afghanistan today? How many drone strikes killed innocent people today or this week? So as long as we have, oh, oh, and the criminality. How many heads rolled on Wall Street from all the money being stolen from us? Who are these, you know, I love this term. They call them overzealous prosecutors who beat up little, you know, beat up the people like us, the smaller people on the, on the level. But where are these overzealous prosecutors prosecuting the real criminals? So I don't see it happening, Alex, because it's immorality at every level. You don't, as I said, you haven't seen one head roll on Wall Street. And what do they do? Roger Clemens. How much money did they spend going after this guy? Three million dollars instead of going after the head of MF Global. Exactly. So that's where I see it going. But again, it goes back to we the people. When enough people, I, I've said this before, there's this wonderful Hindu saying, when the student's ready, the teacher appears. Anybody that's really practiced at anything or got really good at it, knows they had a great teacher in their lives. The same thing to me holds true for the people. When the people are ready, the leader will appear. But to me, the people are not ready emotionally, physically, and spiritually. I was out the other night down here at the waterfront in Kingston, and I sat outside and I was having my dinner, and I'm watching the people go by. It's like the whales got beached. And well, how could people go out in public like this? No one was dressed. 
People uh, eating ice cream cones, you know, slovenly dressed, no manners. What has happened to the dignity of this country? I have a, a picture hanging on the wall. It's in one of my books, what Zizzy gave Honey Boy, of my parents, may they rest in peace. Italian immigrants, 1934, the height of the Depression. My father worked in a, in a, a, a radio factory. My uncle Frankie and uncle Mario worked in fish stores. My uncle Al was a butcher. They were all working people at these jobs. Every one of them is dressed and looking dignified. What happened? And you know what happened? It's very simple. We've been chained and mauled. Because my Uncle Al, he had his own butcher's shop. My Uncle Frankie and Uncle Mario, they had their own fish stores. Now you got to work for Walmarts. You got to work for Apple, making $62.50 a week. You have to work for Staples. There used to be stationery stores. There used to be grocery stores. There used to be hardware stores. That's right, little boys and girls. Not everything was chained and mauled. They've given everything to the rich. They've given everything to the Buffets. They've been gated. They've been chained and they've been mauled. And as long as it keeps going in this direction, you're going to keep working for the man. You will never have a career. Waste your money on college. Go to work for one of the big guys so they can enslave you for the rest of your life. That's what's happened to America. We used to have neighborhoods. We used to have entrepreneurs. It wasn't gobbled up by the greedy Tysons. The fat Cargills, the bloated Buffets. How many more billions do you need? How many more billions do you need, Warren? Stop telling people to drink Coke. It's crap. It's poison. They're poisoning our minds, our bodies, and they've robbed our spirit. So as long as we keep going in this direction, you know my motto, break the chains. Olive Garden's not Italian food. Pizza Hut isn't pizza. Oh, I loved it. They had the clown out there. The prostitutes rolled out the McDonald's clown. They're chef. They're chef. There's no such thing as a chef at McDonald's. He said none of the food is unhealthy, and they let him get away with it. Oh, you're right, but, but there's two different things happening. Either people are getting more in a zombified, gray, blobular fashion, just, just little automatons that are programmable, or they're awakening, and those two things are happening. But I want to play you this clip, because before we went on air here, I asked if you'd seen this. You said you'd read the transcript. This is from CNBC a few days ago, and it goes on for like four and a half minutes where e each guest agrees, yes, we're absolutely slaves, but then they go on, if you watch the full clip uh, that's at InfoWars.com, to say, but it's good that we're slaves because the fellow reserve knows best. And I've seen this in The Economist. I've seen it in The Financial Times. All of them are like, yeah, technocrats run things now. You know, they appoint the leaders now, but they know best. So I thought I'd play this clip and ask you, why are they getting this naked? Because I've seen hundreds of articles the last few months, more than 30 in the last week, in prestigious so-called publications, finally not apologizing and saying, okay, Alex, you were right, world government run by megabanks. No, the answer is megabanks, you are their slave. They actually say, we are slaves, quote, we are absolutely slaves to the banks. And they've conquered us, and, that, and, and that's a good thing, Gerald. Here it is from CNBC. Now, the question is, do we all work for central bankers? That's what I want to address to our guest tonight. Is this global governance at last? Is it one world, the central bankers in charge? Jim, Jim Urio, aren't we all just living and dying for what the central banks do? Aren't we all just counting on the fact that there's a Bernanke put, put and that we won't go any lower than, say, 5% uh, down from here? Of course we are, because if we look at the economic data, there's nothing to get excited about in that. We are absolutely 
slaves to central banks because and we'd love to be slaves to the economy but the economic numbers continue to do nothing but trend low yeah and listen to what the fed did this weekend i think they really screwed up here they said that we're going to do this operation twist through the end of the year in other words they're going to create uncertainty about what happens after operation twist right at the same time that the fiscal cliff kicks in do we really want all that's enough and, and that's one guy that did criticize them the others were saying oh don't blame the fed we need to be their slaves since when have we gotten to the point where Congress has told the UN and NATO run our military to their face and that we're slaves to foreign banks? How do we ever get there, Gerald? Again, it was a takeover. They had laws in place, Alex. It was called the Robinson Patman Act, the Sherman Antitrust Act, the Clayton Act. All of these acts were put in so the robber barons wouldn't steal everything from us. They were all put in place so America could be the greatest country in the world. They were all put in place why people all over the world wanted to come here to begin their beginning, to live their life and to create their dream. It's all been taken away from us. It's, we've been Walmarted, we've been targeted, we've been McDonald and Burger King. Everything is controlled by Home Goods, by Home Depot, by Lowe's, by a few people They used to be People are too young. To, I was thinking about this, talking to my, the younger people on my staff. I said, you know, you guys don't remember the time when there were hardware stores everywhere. Right down the block over here, there was a stationery store. Right over there, there used to be a butcher. Right over there, there used to be not a chain of dry cleaners, but a dry cleaner. Well, I was about to say, though, I remember growing up when the big box stores were just coming in, but, but, but I remember spending summers working on the farm and the ranch and my grandma would take me down to the little town but there were like eight little dry goods stores and she could go in and look at belts and hats and gear and it was different prices and different qualities there was more choices on that little country road than there are today at even a sporting goods store or a giant Shepler's or something. The truth is there was more choices back then. In a small town, you'd have five butchers right there. And, and people would learn who was the best, who had the best this, the best that. It gave all these little choices. You'd have, it, go ahead. No, you got it. It gave them all the little choices and it gave them an income. It gave them the ability to reach their dream. It gave them an ability to live a solid middle class life or even an upper middle class life. You know, John Anthony West, who I work with, they, his parents had, a, had a, a clothing store, women's clothing store in White Plains, New York. He, he lived an upper middle class life. Now everything is Macy. It, it's, everything has been taken over. I was telling you about my family. This is the picture on the wall. Look at the way these people are dressed. This is 1934. Look at the way they look. They worked in vegetable stores. They worked in fish stores and there were butchers. They worked in the manufacturing sector. Remember that one? Alex, you don't need to be a genius to figure out what happened. We were sold out. We were sold out by Clinton. We were sold out by Reagan. We were sold out by Nixon. We were sold out by Carter. We were sold out by Bush. And, we was, and we're being sold out by Obama. Every one of these presidents, after Eisenhower, began to sell our nation out. Nixon taking us off the gold And stand. Eisenhower warned us about the military-industrial complex taking over. And now today, you turn on any ball game, it's nothing but troop worship. But it's not even worship of the troops. It's worship of them taking over. It's like living in a fascistic science fiction movie. It is. Look, go back to our trend alert following when Henry Paulson, the former CEO of the Goldman Sachs gang, anointed U.S. Treasury Secretary under George Bush, George W. Bush, began the whole tarp baloney. We had to bail out the banks. We sent out a trend alert. Washington has hijacked Wall Street. It's the same thing. It's a takeover. Fascism, by definition, is the merger of state and corporate powers. They use the military as enforcers for the political and financial crime bosses. That's all it is. And as classic tyranny comes to us, we're supposed to just fall down and worship the troops aiming machine guns at us. Uh, it's unbelievable. Gerald Salente, uh, 
We're going to put your website up on screen there for people to visit it. Uh, people can subscribe there. Also sign up for the Trends Alerts. Uh, they can get your books as well. Tell us about your books. Tell us about the Trends Journal. Tell us about the work you're doing. I know there's a lot of fake websites out there claiming to be you. There's two, U two URLs that really are you, so make sure and make that note uh, for everybody. And then in five minutes, because I've been asking the question, other points that you think are important for people to know. Well, first of all, the Trends Journal, I just want to mention a couple of things about it. Our staff is unparalleled. There's not a group of trend forecasters or, or, or free thinkers writing in, in trends than, than we have, whether it's Nomi Prinz, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, of course, John Anthony West, who, by the way, is famous for his work on the mystery of the Sphinx. It was a major uh, NBC special with Charlton Heston narrate, narrating it a couple of years ago, proving that the Sphinx predates the Sahara Desert because of the watering, which brings it back to about 10,000 BC, not 2,500 BC. The importance of that is, is that civilization's a lot different than the way they're telling yeah, us Yeah, the history it. we've been told is not accurate. Yeah, and then we have also Anthony Frieda, our illustrator, nationally award-winning illustrator, uh, Ben Davis, one of the top science writers in the world. So it's really, you're going to find trend information and history before it happens, like you won't find anywhere else. And as you well know, we're preparing people for what's ahead. So not only are we telling the history before it happens, we're giving you the opportunities of how to pre prepare and plan for what's ahead. And what's ahead is this. We're already in the first great war of the 21st century. Let's just add them up, Alex. Bahrain. Oh, they don't talk about that because the Fifth Fleet's there. It's riots virtually every day. Yemen, we're sending predator drones in there as well. Saudi Arabia has actually invaded Bahrain, but they just call them protectorate troops. Then we're going into Syria. You see what's going on over there. A new government is moving into Egypt, the Muslim Brotherhood. Another Muslim government going into Morocco. Tunisia, the same thing. Riots, uprisings, and radicalization. And I'm not saying this is an anti-Muslim, that's the furthest thing from it. One of my good friends and partners in other businesses is Muslim. I'm not like that. What I'm saying is, and again, I wrote this back in Trends 2000 in 1995 and the Trends Journal in 1993, Crusades 2000. They're radicalizing the Muslim people because of American foreign policy. So we keep moving around the globe. Greece, wonderful situation there. Severe depression, only getting worse, plus put on top of that huge immigration problems. People that came in from Afghanistan, Iraq, all of those areas trying to escape the turmoil. Libya, Africa, they can't get out. Serious problems in Greece. Oh, Spain, the indignados, the people that are indignant, 50% plus unemployment rate among the youth, 25% unemployment rate generally, much higher actually, and then of course a severe economic decline, a real estate bust. Oh, let's move over to Italy, same thing. By the way, everybody now hear this. If you wanna see a model that's may be successful, Watch what's going on in Italy. There's a new movement, they call it the Five Star Movement. It's being run by a, by a satirist, a brilliant one, Beppe Grillo. And this movement is now the number three party in Italy. And it may be a model for displacing the, other, the two corrupt parties that are running most countries. It ain't democracy, folks, that we have. It's, it's communism with just two isms, or fascism, I should say. It ain't communism, it's fascism, with two parties running it. That, that's another overthrow government. Then we go over to the UK. They're in trouble, they're trying to juice the economy, they can't do it. Go over to Brazil. Their economy is now tanking, they're dumping stimulus in, they can't do it. Pick up the news, they're cooking the books in China. They cannot fix the economy. If Europe, the number one importer of Chinese goods, America, the number two importer, isn't importing, China's not making. 
Yes, there are a lot of rich people in China, about 400 million doing well and, and, and getting by pretty good. But guess what? They have a population of 1.2 million people, and the rest of them aren't doing well at all. Riots are bubbling up. Then go over to Australia. Hey, Aussies. Hey, Chileans. Hey, Bolivians. If China, Indonesia, Vietnam, they're not making stuff. Brazil, you guys ain't exporting. The entire global economic system is in collapse. The world is already at wars. There are civil wars. There are regional wars. And there's going to be a world war. Hey, remember Iran? Getting closer to the breaking point. So that's where we're headed. Absolutely. And th th now we're getting reports of British troops in the north of Syria. Turkey says they'll attack them anytime they want. Uh, we've got the Russians. R r and again, I'm not saying they're angels, but the point is they're the they are not aggressing. The West, run by bankers, America doesn't exist for all intents and purposes, are running missiles and troops and revolutionaries up all into Russia's borders. Uh, in the West, in the South, in the East. And Medvedev and Putin have said, we've rolled nukes into place. If you keep doing it, we're going to nuke you. I mean, I look back to the Cold War. The Russians didn't talk like that then. To have the Russians saying, if you try to destabilize us, we're going to nuke you. The State Department's trying to overthrow Putin right now. That's admitted. I mean, this is crazy. These, these bankers that make 40 to 1 bets with your money, like Don Corzine, they may end up causing World War III. These people are nuts. Alex, the timeline is perfect. I've, I've mentioned this before. The crash of 1929, the Great Depression, currency wars, trade wars, world war. That's all it's about. The Panic of 08, the Great Depression, we're in it. Recession, depression, depends what country you go into. Currency wars, they're on. Look at the look at the look at the currencies. The rupees crashing. The real. Yeah, I mean, there's the currencies are, are all in upheaval. Trade wars. They're heating up. And I just mentioned about all the world wars that are starting to heat up. They're taking us to war. The psychopaths do it all the time. It's the money changers. Again, just go back to the beginning. I mean, you talk about Christ. When does the when does the Prince of Peace become violent? Not angry. Violent to pick up a whip and drive the money changers out of the temple because they were the most evil people on the planet. They're called bankers today. When I was a kid in the Bronx, we called them loan sharks. No difference. So it's the money changers that are destroying civilization. They did it during Christ's time, and they're doing it now during our time. You played the clip, and I love these little weenies on CNBC. I don't think there's a pair of cojones if you put all those guys together, bowing down, scraping up, and telling them how wonderful the bankers are. What a disgrace. And again, it goes back to what I was saying. No dignity, no respect, certainly no courage, got no passion, and no integrity. Wonder why we're in trouble? A bunch of yes men and a bunch of soft people like Hillary, because, you know, it, it's been the Pentagon. It's been the last three Joint Chiefs of Staff chairmen have said no to the Iran war. Now they got Dempsey in there who reportedly, uh, you know, is not too smart and, and, and is ready to do whatever he's told. And are we really going to let a bunch of crazy loan shark bankers start a war with the Russians? Because I've talked to a lot of historians, a lot of analysts. They said the Russians d would not be saying that if they weren't getting ready to do it. And, and so, I mean, I mean, they're threatening them with nuclear war, and the bankers are like, sure, let's have it. Well, I don't think we're going to see a nuclear war, but let's, let's not forget the Russians, you know. I mean, you go back to Napoleon, you know, to Hitler. I mean, nobody beats the Russians. You know, they, they, they'll, they'll go to the last person, but then they're not going to be the last one. So the, the Russia, uh, Russia is not going to tolerate, I believe, Western, more Western uh, imperialism and overreach. They learned what happened with Libya uh, when they agreed to um, allow NATO to run that humanitarian mission, and I don't believe it's going to happen again. You mean the, the thousands of airstrikes and ethnic cleansing of the blacks, the humanity? The, what the, but Obama has a peace prize, though. Well, again, you know, look at, look at the people in charge. This is high school. That's all it is.
and the press would know more than the people that used to be, you know, the, 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 the used to write the school newspaper. It's all show. It's red carpets. It's theater. It's the presidential reality show. That's all this all is. Right. Well, Gerald, that was an amazing interview. Thank you for giving us so much time, and people can find out more. I mean, I know there's two URLs that go to your site. What's the best one? Trends Journal, trendsjournal.com, trendsjournal.com, or trendsresearch.com. And, and, and those are the only official Gerald Salente sites. Those are it. All right, uh, final question. When do the dominoes really hit us here? I mean, I know we're already in a recession, depression. It's bad, but, I mean, will we get to a grease-like level? Yes, yes, yeah, it's collapsing. Our, our level of debt is comparable to theirs. They're not going to get out of it. The only thing they can do different here is print money to keep the Ponzi scheme going. But other than that, no, it's, gonna, it's collapsing. It's collapsing. Around. Look at the numbers. They can't create jobs. All of these kids that are getting out of college with university degrees and worthlessness and mountains of debt. Here's how the whole game changes, Alex. People used to get out of college, used to get jobs, used to buy houses. Now they get out of college, they have debt that they could have bought a house with, and they don't have a job. They're not going to get out of it. It's only going to get worse. Gerald Salente, well said. Thank you so much for spending time with us. Hopefully we can have an awakening and reverse this before it's too late. And thank you for all you're doing and helping to awake everyone. Well, if we don't turn things around, we have no future. I've got children and I just, uh, you know, what I'm worried about is when the zombies finally wake up and realize how much trouble they're in, I don't know what they're going to do. They won't do anything. They'll freeze. I tell you this story when I was in the earthquake in Chile. Then the, on the 14th floor, it's the worst earthquake Chile had in 100 years. I was the first guy down, 14 flights of stairs. Everybody froze. How about the Concordia, that, that Italian ship? They're waiting for the, for the uh, captain to give orders as the thing is going under. What happened with the World Trade Center? The fire in the North Tower is under control. Go back to your offices. Look at the front cover of the Trends Journal. All aboard. Next train to Auschwitz. Kiss those calories goodbye. Take care, Alex. I got to run now. I got a new one, new call coming in. All right. God bless and take care. All right. Bye-bye. All right, folks. Hour-long interview with Gerald. I could see him looking over. I could tell he was getting a call coming in. Wow, that's a way to end the show. And, and that is what happens. People are living in absolute and total, complete la-la land. And then they call us conspiracy theorists. It's like that libertarian guy we talked about earlier. And he's going around giving speeches, not against the New World Order, not against the global government, not against the admission that we've been hijacked by foreign banks and they're calling it authoritarian world government in the Financial Times of London and saying that's good. No, instead of getting a cigar and, hey, Alex, you were right. Hey, man, you know, the New World Order was real. Here's a cigar, buddy. Hey, hey, man, thank you for warning. We've got to keep these conspiracy theorists that talk about world government out of our midst. We don't want to talk bad about the bankers. Uh... Again, this is the crazy level that we've reached as a society. Probably 30% of people in the United States are somewhat awake now. I have tried to target the police and military because they're key in all this. I'd say half the cops are awake, something like 60, 70% of the troops are awake. We have numbers that back a lot of that up. Ron Paul getting 73% or so. It varied month to month of the, all the military donations for all you know, uh, the Republican and, uh, and Obama as well. But when they get them in the peer pressure, who knows what's going to happen. All I know is these bankers are going to end up killing us all if we don't stop them. We're going to go to break, and we're going to come back with the exclusive premiere, because we only aired large parts of it on the radio today, but this is it, commercial-free, when we come back. Uh, the Billy Corgan interview, 40-something minutes long, that we did over the weekend, and we're working hard. We came in here, I'm not bragging, I'm just telling you. Some of our crew came in here, like Marcos Morales, on Saturday, because that's the only time Billy could do the interview before he left to South America for tour, uh, his new album came out this week, was this Saturday. We came in, we did it, he edited it Sunday and Monday. Here it is with all the video and everything added. Uh, I'm just telling you, we are busting our butt to bring you InfoWars Nightly News. And I know you're busting your butt uh, with a $5.95 a month to have PrisonPlanet.tv memberships. There's a 15-day free trial running. One membership is really six memberships with the same Username and passcode, 
Six people can be logged onto your account if you share it with people that you trust. Or create a new passcode. I mean, don't use, don't give them the passcode to your bank account. It's the same thing with the website. Word of the wise is sufficient on that. But people actually sent me emails. Well, what you're saying, share our passcode. They could break it. Well, you can't break in if it's just your username and passcode. That doesn't get them into the rest of your info. You know, that, that's that's all separate. Um, but but. The point is, is that it's really six memberships for the price of one, and it's what funds this. This, this studio, the crew, the people, uh, the everything that's uh, going on here. So, uh, jam-packed marathon transmission tonight. It's going to be two and a half hours of InfoWars uh, nightly news or so, and uh, that's why when the crew knows I'm doing the nightly news, look out here, because uh, <laughs> Aaron Dykes is doing it tomorrow night, but I taped a question and answer with Alex is like 25 minutes long that we're going to air tomorrow night for, for viewers of and, and readers and users of planetinfowars.com. And by the way, use that site now to get organized, folks. It's your social network on resistance and activism, preparedness, outdoors, guns, health, video, business. That's an important fight against the new order, getting together, dating, uh, Breeding prodigiously in the mine shaft gap. Okay, now I'm quoting Dr. Strangelove. Economics, entertainment, got to have some fun, you know, makes Jack a dull boy. Actually, all work and no play makes me insane. Gibbering, obnoxious creature. All right, uh, hour-long interview with Salente, Billy Corrigan, bombshell interview. We're going to upload this to YouTube soon, and I don't even know what to say or call it. I mean, it was just Billy Corrigan on fire. Billy Corrigan, uh, you know, exposes the Matrix. Billy Corrigan es uh, you know, escapes the matrix. I what do you call it? Billy Corrigan down the rabbit hole? Billy Corrigan. Billy Corrigan, a voice in the rock star wilderness. Billy Corrigan battles satanic Easter bunnies from Planet 10. <laughs> Billy Corrigan fights the, what was that poem my mother would read me? The Jabberwocky. Hey, we didn't have a daily quote today, did we? We do have one? Okay, well, let's do it right now. Daily quote, but first, the extravaganza continues. Will you guys pull up for me the Jabberwocky poem? I forget who, uh, I forget who, who wrote that. It's some famous guy. The Jabberwocky burbled as it went. That's all I know. And... Floofled, snoofled, goofled. Was it Lewis Carroll? Lewis Carroll, yeah, I think so. Now the Jabberwocky. There you go. Let's pull that up here. There it is. Thank you. Please, uh, uh, will you put that in the middle for me? Th From Through the Looking Glass and What Alice Found There, 1872, Twas brilling and slithery toves did gyre and gimble in the wabe. All mimsy were the Borogroves, and Moam raves out grave. Beware the Jabberwocky, my son, the jaws that bite, the jaws that catch. They're talking about a TSA worker. Beware the Jub Jub bird, and shun the frumptuous Bandersnatch. He took his vorpal sword in hand, long time the maxim foe he sought. So rested he by the tum-tum tree, and stood a while and thought. And as if Uferish thought he stood, the jabberwock with eyes of flame came whiffling through the tungly wood and burbled as it came. One, two, one, two, and through and through the vorpal blade went snicker-snack. He left it dead, and with its head he went galumphing back. And thou hast slain the Jabberwocky. Come to my arms, my beamish boy. O frabjous day, kalu kalay. He chortled in his joy. Twas brilling and with slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wabe. All whimsy were the burrow groves, and the moam wraith outgrabe. Now that is news, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> All right, now for a Jabberwocky a quote from George Herbert Walker Bush. The world can therefore seize, let me say it in his voice, the world can therefore seize the opportunity to fulfill the long-held promises of a new world order. 
where diverse nations are drawn together in common depression that we engineer, I'm sorry, cause, to fight Al Qaeda we created to achieve the universal aspirations of all mankind to be exterminated by a world government. I'm sorry, what? Oh, yeah, there he is holding hands with uh, his date for the evening. Uh, anyway. <laughs> all right. That's it. We're going to come back and uh, talk to Billy Corrigan, whose blade went snicker snack. I'm Alex Jones. We'll be right back. Sick of the globalist eugenesis control freaks adding poison to your water and laughing as you get sick and die? Start purifying your water with ProPure. My friends, I've done a lot of research, and the best gravity filter out there, bar none, is ProPure. And it's available discounted at InfoWars.com. Its filters are silver impregnated to prevent bacterial growth. There's no priming required. It's NSF 42 certified. Optional fluoride filters can reduce fluoride up to 95%. Easy to set up and use. Doesn't require electricity. Purify water from lakes, streams, ponds, and wells. This filter system leaves in beneficial minerals, which is key. Save money by not buying bottled water and avoid BPA that leaches from the plastic. ProPure is the best gravity-fed filter out there. It's what my family uses. Infowars.com already has the lowest price on ProPure. But if you add the promo code WATER at checkout, you get an additional 10% off at Infowars.com. You can also call to order 888-253-3139. Well, we've got a real treat for listeners and viewers. Billy Corrigan, the founder of Smashing Pumpkins, a prolific songwriter, guitarist, you name it, joins us to talk about his new hit album. And let me tell you, from the Chicago Tribune uh, to Rolling Stone, people are saying this is one of his uh, best albums ever. And I had a chance to download it and uh, uh, listen to it just the other day and found that I think it's some of the best work ever from well, Billy Corrigan and his great crew. Billy, wonderful having you today, and uh, congratulations uh, on the rave reviews. Thank you, Alex. It's, uh, it's an interesting time uh, being sort of thrown back into the American uh, zeitgeist. Um, and what's funny is then, you know, like some of the things that you and I talked about a few months back, uh, some of the ideas that are going on as people are sort of waking up to the, the political shifts, the social shifts, the spiritual shifts. Um, you know, suddenly then having a voice in the American mainstream, um, you know, I'm able to talk about some of these issues in a way that people can understand because I've been around for a while, you know. Well, you certainly have been. Let's cut right to the chase with this new album. Uh, beyond political, you're talking about the nature of reality, uh, you know, quasars and celestial and panopticons and, of course, Oceania, uh, right out of 1984, uh, break down uh, the spirit that you were you know, basically channeling when you uh, put together this new album. Well, I think it, uh, so some of the roots start on this album start from the last album uh, in 2007, Zeitgeist, which, um, you know, on some conscious or unconscious level, uh, listening to you and, and, and doing my own research on the Internet kind of led me to a dark place where I felt, you know, uh, what's happening to my country? How do I grapple with the these feelings that I'm having, um, you know, uh, when I started in music, uh, you know, it was all cheery, uh, Reagan, uh, you know, flags are waving, everything is great. And, you know, there was a lot of kind of, uh, uh, middle-class discourse on, on, on stuff that maybe now seems really small in, in, in comparison to what we're really grappling with now as we see what's coming economically, um, down the pike. So I, I think if you if you can draw a line from sort of a, a, a darker place in trying to grapple with the American dream, which Zeitgeist had something to do with, um, five years later now, Oceania, I think, is a way to say, um, you know, I'm just not going to live in that spirit, that energy, that dark energy. Um, I, I've heard you talk about it, and, and certainly I've thought about it a lot, which is, you know, uh, we got to live, you know. Um, some of the most inspirational stuff I've ever heard you talk about is when you just talk about nature, about how, how God's kingdom is, inspires you to, you know, to fight the good fight and, and to, you know, think of families and, and, and what life's really about. And, and I think that um, my album is really about that. It's like we've all, we all go through hard times. Our country's going through a hard time. It's not a political album in that sense, but at the same time, if the politics is part of the backdrop uh, in the foreground, I, I just want to embrace my life and, 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 get, and get right with God, get right with my my spirit, because I think that's the way to, to lead us out of this kind of craziness that 
again, seems to be coming, and God knows where it's coming from, but, I, I mean, everywhere you go, people feel it. And, and, and they can't put their finger on it. You know, you, you see signs where that's, uh, you know, what's going on in Greece or Spain. Um, we just had a show canceled, actually. Uh, we were supposed to play uh, uh, in, uh, on an island called uh, Tenerife, I think the island is called, or the city was called Tenerife. And the, and the show was canceled because of the, S the Spanish economic crisis. Um, so these are starting to have real effects on, on uh, you know, uh, and so when we look back at we, we see these things happening, we don't, but we don't know where this is all, all going, you know what I mean? Um, I mean, when you see mainstream news sources, the Foxes and the CNNs, uh, using the kind of language that five years ago you were being condemned for, you know, it's kind of laughable. Profound, Mr. Corrigan. We see Larry Summers, one of the top bankster globalists in the Washington Post last week, saying, prepare for total collapse. But he's acting like it's all an accident and they're the wise old men that are going to save us when they're the people on record that engineered this implosion. That's how we were able more than 10 years ago to to chronicle what was coming. Uh, and now here we are. It's it's out in the open. And a lot of people say, well, you're being negative talking about all these horrible things. But if we don't focus and expose the bad then we can never recognize it from the good and protect what's good. And it, I can feel the heartbeat of the universe, God, whatever people want to call it. And more and more people are actually coming out of their trance. I am seeing that. But I also see others who aren't waking up getting deeper into the trance. Uh, I would totally agree with that. I think what's happening is we're seeing a split. The people that are invested in reality, and by reality, I'm not talking about the Adam Sandler movie version, <laughs> you know what I mean, or the sitcom version. I'm talking about reality as we know it, as our ancestors lived it. You know, like, what's, what the heck is going to happen to me and my family? How do we move forward? How do we progress as a species? How do we evolve rightly and morally? Um, as we see that part of, our, our, and it's everywhere, it's not just America, it's, you see, it, you see glimpses in China and, and in India and Africa, as people are waking up, they're doing their own research. They're having their own discourse with their friends and family. So, so as, and, and now they have access to information in a way that they've ever had. So empires can't sort of play this game that they've played, you know, dating back probably longer than you and I could recall. The other side, of course, has to go deeper into the dream, like the Matrix. They, ha they have to go there because that's the only way to sustain the, the, the insanity. Um, and here's, and here's, this is a touchy subject, but, but this is the, this is the classic example. We've all had that situation where like, you know, something horrible happens, you know, a, a kid falls down a hole and, and, you know, when the, we're live from the kid that fell down the hole and everybody's, will the kid get out of the hole safely? And, you know, they're prayer vigils and, 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 and yes, that's, that's an appropriate response. We should care. Yet, <laughs> meanwhile, kids are dying everywhere. <laughs> uh, you know, is it is it, is it from a, a, an unjust military action, or is it from uh, a, a reckless uh, uh, police force, or so? You know, there, there's things that are happening everywhere that we don't have that same level of concern. But why don't we? Well, we've been socially conditioned that one thing is okay to care about, and one thing, well, just accept the official version and just kind of march on. And I think this is where people are waking up and saying, "Wait a second, there's a hypocrisy in that. Why don't we care about everybody equally?" And, and you see that as the world citizenry is opening, uh, is, is waking up. And so then, it, then it's not really about you or me anymore. It's about people taking their own individual journey to discover what they want from this world. And those that are waking up are going to find that information, and they're going to draw their own conclusions, and they're probably not going to necessarily agree with you or me or the next guy or Larry, Larry Summers. They're going to make their own conclusions, and that's what we want. We want a bunch of independent thinkers. We don't want sheep. That's the worst thing. But the sheep are going to become more sheep because that's what they want. They don't want to wake up. They want to live in that dream. And, and I know people like that in my family. They just they don't want to know. <laughs> they, they just, you know I'm sure you've had those conversations. Anybody listening to you, I'm sure has had those conversations. You talk to people and you, you, know, you talk about, I don't know, the Federal Reserve, something that's really not that political when you get right down to it, and they don't want to hear it. They just want to put their fingers in their ear and, and believe the TV show that's being presented politically. Bang on from my perspective. Billy, that's what's happening. The wheat is being separated from the chaff, and people that are committed to the illusion, once they get into that trap, they'll go along with anything. And you've crystallized something that I've attempted to boil down, and that's that 
it's insulting that the power structure, the corporate controlled media, the people that create the maps of the mind, they say, get upset about this child that they claim Assad killed in Syria. And then when hundreds of thousands of Iraqi children are killed, we're told, oh, they're just, you know, dehumanized uh, Arabs or Muslims. And it's insulting. It's insulting that the mainstream media and the corporate culture tries to flip our emotions on and off and tell us when we can care about something. I don't mean to go off into a rant, but but what you said really is the key. It, it's, it, it, it's recognizing how ridiculous and, and, and fake and plastic this culture is. Yes, and, and, and so, like, for example, uh, we just had the case with the Sandusky, the Penn State, the, the horrible stories of, of molesting these young men. And as you've talked about, maybe a culture that would, would have protected him because of wanting to maintain power or not, uh, not pay the, the price for looking the other way. Now, now of course, you're going to have the, the cases that are going to come up with the, uh, the administration officials that may, allegedly may have covered it up and, and so on and so on and so on. But the interesting thing is what I see in, with the people around me, and I'm not necessarily surrounded by a bunch of liberal class. I, I'm surrounded by a lot of working class people. Uh, I see them not necessarily buying these narratives like they used to. You know, and so what happens, and we know this from rock and roll, if you see, if the audience doesn't react, you turn the volume up louder. Well, what we have is a culture that's just turning up the volume louder. You know, because people start asking real questions, and so, so of course, then the, then the theater needs to be heightened, and and new narratives need to be created to try to create an emotional engagement, which of course is not real, because it, it's meant to take you on some level, even if it's just profit driven, uh, to take you away from your very human emotion, which is why don't we care about everybody? <laughs> The ruling class, the social engineers, are so good at controlling us and dumbing us down and having a thousand you know, blaring loudspeakers in the background to where we just curl up as little balls. But what the ruling elite need to understand is they're not immune from this. They're uh, basically drinking their own poison. And this is what happens throughout history with Caligula and Nero and so many other systems where the elite go crazy and that's what concerns me the most is that undoubtedly the ruling power structures the different special interests they're in control of the world they're in control of the propaganda but they're not in control of themselves and so it's almost like the monsters from their subconscious are now actually running the machine and instead of it being Caligula marrying his horse or Nero going crazy and burning Rome and then committing suicide because he could, they're going to commit planetary suicide. They're going to kill us with all these super weapons and bioweapons if humanity collectively at an instinctive level and a spiritual level, and those two are connected, doesn't flip the survival switch and cause some type of emergency metamorphosis that takes us out of this. We're either going to move to the next level or we're going to destroy ourselves. My gut, my spirit shakes with the realization and total understanding that we are at the crossroads jump point. I think that we're going to survive it. Um, and I think that there's going to be a kind of, uh, for lack of a better word, a public reckoning. Now, uh, ideally, it's, 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 a, it's a peaceful one. Um, where the the you know uh, uh, Jim Morrison uh, from the Doors, you know the great the great lead singer of the Doors, uh, he was he was he he was very intrigued by the idea of um, how to manipulate a crowd and and some of the things that I brought in rock and roll I sort of took from his theories. He used to do things like uh, when he was just a spectator, he would go in a crowd with three of his friends and and they would plant themselves at various points in the crowd and try to turn the crowd against the band. And then obviously on stage he would do things to see wh where the flip point was. Uh, you know, there's uh, people uh, talk about catchphrase like a tipping point. You don't need 100% of the people to agree with something to reach a tipping point. So where at we let let's say there's let's say uh, in, a, in a gross oversimplification, there's a right way and there's a wrong way. And and most people and probably the predominant number of people listening to your program feel that what's happening is the wrong way. We just feel in our gut that something something's not right, whether it's GMOs or vaccines or you know. Uh, uh, fascism or Federal Reserve doesn't matter. We just feel something's not quite right. Okay, where's that tipping point? Uh, if we have, if there's a hundred million people, how many people do we need in that tipping point? And I think we're starting to get actually pretty close to that tipping point, where the the public, the the, the 
let's call it the, 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 the thoughtful minority that's not going to buy this BS propaganda, there's going to be a point where it's, we're just going to reach that, and, and there's going to be a critical mass point where you're not going to be able to turn up the volume anymore. You're not going to be able to play any louder, for lack of a better way to put it, and something new is going to need to happen. It'll be in that, it'll be in that moment, that decisive moment, where a, a completely new paradigm can be born, um, and, and all of us are going to have to have a different level of responsibility in this culture, and that's sort of what I've been talking about as I've been promoting my album, because I'm getting asked a lot of questions about um, how musicians can exist rightfully in the new culture, and I keep talking about self-responsibility, entrepreneurship, and at the same time, the audience needs to meet them somewhere in the middle where they need to support an artist who's being real as opposed to, let's say, the robot class. And, and we see these parallels everywhere in culture. We see it in Hollywood. We see it even in the political class where occasionally somebody actually stands up and tries to have a good idea. And I know lately you've been talking a lot about what's going on with Ron Paul and Rand Paul and the way people feel betrayed and, you know, and whether this is just a, another shell game. And I mean, we're all kind of dealing with these different reckonings in public. And then the converse, though, that's very different is, well, how should we react? And this is the difference. We're no longer just sheep sort of sitting there with our hands over our ears. We're saying we must do something and, and we have to form the new paradigms of what we can actually do. I agree with you. I, I feel the responsibility that I have a platform to reach millions, that I should be doing a better job. I catch myself getting drugged back into anger, getting, getting uh, you know, kind of rabbit trailed off into things that they put out. And I'm overanalyzing. And I think it's important that all of us that know the truth stop overanalyzing and know that we're trying to do the right thing. We, we want to make a better planet. We want our species to survive. We want to be less violent because I found that good people, to oversimplify it, tend to overanalyze ourselves. I mean, here's an example, and you may not have known this 15, 20 years ago, but I'm sure you know it now. And I'm not just kissing your ass uh, here, Mr. Corrigan, getting to know you a little bit, uh, you know, listening to what you've had to say over the years. I know why the power structure that's very shrewd from day one is being attacking you because you are intelligent. Uh, you are a threat to their system, you are a maverick, and the zombies and the robot class tend to peck at those that they see as a threat. If you were a leader within the system, then it wouldn't be a problem. And that's why even though the reviewers are having to admit that, okay, this is a really good album, wow, it's, you know, uh, it was selling a lot of copies. People are excited about it. There's still a lot of little snipes when I was reviewing the last few days what's being said, but that's a badge of honor. And I've noticed over the years, uh, sometimes you've kind of responded to that and said, I don't know why you're doing that. Well, look, I know why they're doing it. It's more than just jealousy. It's the fact that you make them uncomfortable and the system knows that as you mature, people like you are a real threat because you could influence others in your sphere to turn against the system. I've, I've seen this happen in Hollywood. I've seen this happen in business circles. The system is very good at spotting people that see through the matrix, or they're good at spotting people that they know will someday fully break the trance and come out of the matrix. Uh, your comments on that statement? Well, thank you. That's a, that's a, that's a big compliment to, to take. Uh, my my thought on it is is that uh, you know it's a little bit like the old Soviet system. Um, if there is a system of control at the top, if there's a if there's somebody sitting in a room somewhere, we don't know his or her name, and they're dictating like a puppet master. Well, they're putting people in place on those on those lower rungs, those local government rungs, uh, to to dissuade independent thinking. I mean, you know, we've all seen those YouTube clips where uh, somebody stands up at a local city council meeting and goes, why are we putting, uh, you know, aluminum in our water? Uh, and then, you know, the guy hits the gavel, sit down, you know, you're not allowed to talk. Well, according to the rules, I have five minutes. No, you know, you know, this kind of stuff. You, you want to whack them old people at the bottom level. If you actually make it up to the middle level, or in my case, you know, the upper levels, you see different things. You see a different uh, discourse behind the scenes. Uh, if I can give anybody my own view from my experience, is, let's call it behind this, uh, let's we'll use the term the matrix, having been at the top levels, uh, uh, having been in the White House and talking to people behind the scenes, having been uh, in, at parties where there's 14 A-listers uh, in, the, in the same room that I'm in, the, the, the elite class, to, to use your terminology, uh, there's a sort of an amoral characteristic. They look at it sort of as a business as usual, um, and there's something sort of uh, kind of 
Ayn Rand about it, you know, uh, you know uh, the, this idea of uh, progress marching forward, and if you, you run over some skulls, that's just the way it goes. Um, and then there's something sort of frightening about it, which is like, what about the guy who's, you know, just a good guy and he just wants to put some bread on his table and, he, and you know, he just gets crushed under the wheels of that system that doesn't really individualize him, in essence, wants to see him as, as, a, as a statistic. Um, being somebody who sort of has operated inside and outside systems, uh, having once been outside and having been completely integrated, having begin, been given every version of the sellout option, having not taken it, having been uh, sort of almost a humiliated as an idiot for not kind of going with the flow. <laughs> and having oh, they actually on. say that in the reviews. They say you didn't sell out on purpose. They admit that, and they hate the fact that you did it your way, and they seem to hate it even more now that you're still having even bigger success doing it your way. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I, but I, I think I, I think uh, I appreciate the, the praise in that, but I, I think what I'm trying to say is, look around your world, anybody listening, and look at those independent thinkers and, and see how they run them through that same gauntlet. I have to think at this point, having been in public life for 20 years, that there's a systemic belief there. Now, is it as pernicious as somebody sitting in office and saying, get him, get her? I don't think it, I think it's just a system that's evolved uh, from some sort, sort of subconscious place, much like how, the way kids will bully in school. It's not an agreement. The bullies don't go in the corner and say, yeah, let's pick on the kid. They just sort of unconsciously will prey upon the weak because they want to front for all the girls or whatever. It's very similar. Uh, I've run into writers. I, I, I mean, here's a, a perfect example. I run into writers that will uh, come into a room, uh, shake my hand, uh, be very nice to me. You know, uh, you know how you doing? You know how you been since the last time we talked? All good. Flip the light on or put the press record, rip me apart. Where I'm like I'm like literally backpedaling from the interview. Like whoa! Like where is this coming from? And, and, and as a younger man, I I didn't really know how to handle that. The interview ends, the guy stands up and says, oh, great interview, thanks so much. <laughs> then you read the thing that come out of the paper, and, and he says, oh, he, he, was a, he was a fool, he was a nervous idiot, he was, a, he was biting his nails to the quick. I mean, he can't be trusted. And I think, who are they talking about? <laughs> now, is that guy or that girl, is, are they part of some sort of conscious system? I don't really necessarily believe that. I think it's more an unconscious urge to please. We're going to come back and speak with Billy Corrigan of Smashing Pumpkins here in just a moment. Smashingpumpkins.com is a great place to go so you can find the links to get the new album, Oceania. And let me tell you, I've been a Smashing Pumpkins fan uh, since I was in college, and I think this is one of the best records I've ever heard. It may even be better than the one uh, that I that was my previous favorite. I mean, obviously the big hit, 1979. Uh, Billy, um, what do you want to go out to break with, and what should we come out of break with? I think we should uh, launch into Quasar, Alex, because it's just, it's, a, it's about a God's power. We'll be right back. Here is some of Quasar available at smashingpumpkins.com. And we are back with the front man, the founder of Smashing Pumpkins, Billy Corrigan, and you just heard part of Panopticon. That, of course, is a system of surveillance where you think you're always being watched. Uh, what's that song about, as if the name doesn't tell us, Billy? You know, I think it, it, it sort of deals with the duality of uh, the two systems, right? One system being uh, uh, this idea that we're always being surveyed now. Like you can't go down the street without some CCTV camera picking you up, right? On, an, on another sense, there is this eye in the sky keeping an eye on us, you know? So you have a benign system and you have a malicious system, in my opinion. And so it's sort of like how, how it feels to be in between those two ideas. No, 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 exactly. I've learned watching these globalists, and I've seen some of the same things you've seen from different angles. They just know how to pick individuals that fill that space. They go out in the garden, and basically out of the millions and, and billions of people out there, they just select, and they can look at the college transcripts, how they wrote it, the college paper, did they do what the editor wanted, and they can just select the exact type they want and then put them in that position. Yeah, there does seem to be let's call it a bootlicking class. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I believe Roger Waters, uh, you know, the, the great um, auteur of Pink Floyd, really identifies that in his, his incredible work, The Wall. This kind of fascist undertone to um, a slavish going along, uh, you know, I mean, obviously in The Wall he addresses World War II, his father being killed for what purpose? Was it a just purpose? Was it a not purpose? Did anyone really care? Did anybody remember his father after his sacrifice? All the things he wrestled with, and then somehow that very you know, intuitively 
intertwines with fascism. And I think that's really an incredible uh, deep insight from, from Roger in, in that particular work about where that thin line of, of where being a, slavery, a slave on some level, even if it's a psychological slave, even if it's just a willingness to go along because you just don't want to bother, how that somehow leads to this kind of other weird freakish control system. Um, and, and I think what we're all reckoning with is, again, we know something is there. Is it as nefarious as you go into sometimes? Perhaps. Or is it a system that's just been in play for thousands of years and, and nobody's even really at the wheel? <laughs> and it's just kind of rumbling along because it just seems to work and, and there's a lot, lots of money to be Well, that's what Richard Nixon said. He said, it's a wild beast. You can't control it. And so a lot of it is automated, but the, the, the dark generals of this system know how to guide and massage and understand those tricks. But you just went right back to that key again. It's this fake patriotism of using the troops and the flags and the idea, but in reality, you treat the troops like garbage, you take their, their death benefits, you give them the worst doctors, uh, the Homeland Security documents say they're the real threat, but meanwhile, the whole fascist war machine uh, camouflages itself as the guy down the road who went to fight because he wanted to protect America. And it's all a fraud, but people are invested in it, so they don't want to say it's wrong. We've only got about six, seven minutes left because uh, Billy's got to yeah, run I'd us. I'd like to touch on that a second because, because you know, uh, I have friends that are veterans, uh, and and that's where the, that's where we have to make a difference, you see. We have to come, we have to bring these guys back into our communities. We have to listen to what they learned. We have to let them. We have to, you know, encourage their voices. We can't, we can't demonize them for being caught up in a system that maybe they're now realizing didn't stand by them like they thought they were standing by it. And that's the very difficult thing, especially if you if you love your country, because where do you draw those lines? At least on the local level or the relationship level, we can support those people. Uh, into integrating them back into American life because they're having a really hard time, obviously. What I saw this on Drudge Report the other day, and, you know, never know whether things are true or not, but it's at the second highest rate of fatality in, 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 in the Army right now is suicide. Is that Was that true? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, actually, in Afghanistan, uh, it's the number one cause. Uh, and some months, it's the number one cause overall. Uh, the suicide rate is roughly seven times what it was even in Vietnam, uh, because they're sending people in three, four, five, six, seven tours. Uh, many men who were in World War II, one tour, uh, suffered all sorts of serious problems. And now we bring them back here and treat them like garbage. Very well said, they've been caught up in this destructive fraud that is chewing up and murdering innocent people overseas but doing it here on the other end in, in a more sneaky, devilish way. I want to race in the time we've got left here, Billy, through a, a raft of questions and then any final points you've got. I think this is an amazing interview. Uh, let's continue here with other issues. GMO, uh, your take on genetically modified organisms. Uh, I mean, I, I'm no rocket scientist, but you have corn that the, the bugs can't eat because it grows its own pesticide, but then we feed it to humans. And then in the studies, it's causing organ failure in the rats. Uh, what's your view on GMO, and what do you think the power structure is doing there? Well, I, I tend to look at something like this as pretty simple. Number one, it's not going to go away, right? So what do we do about it? Um, I think it's something like, I ask the question like this, why don't we have a choice as, as a consumer to know whether or not we're consuming these foods? It's becoming more and more difficult to be able to identify um, whether or not we're actually eating genetically modified food. That's where it's like, okay, if we can't stop it at the top, why can't we stop it at the bottom? Um, I need, we need to fight those fights. And just circling back to the, to the, um, to the veterans again, you know, for, okay, so if we know something like this, where is this public discourse that we should be having? You know, why, is, why aren't there congressional hearings? Why, why don't we have this airing out, especially on, on, on patriotic, uh, you know, quotation news sources like Fox News. Why isn't there a bigger discussion going on? That's where I get suspicious. You see what I'm saying? The stuff you allude to sometimes, you know, I don't have the personal information necessarily to know whether or not that's true. I can sort of on, on face value say, well, there's something there where there's smoke, there's fire. Where I go to is, is why don't certain systems necessarily then come into play when you would, you would think they would? 
if we if, there, if we know now that suicide is very high amongst our soldiers, why isn't there a movement in the country to figure out why? Now you can say intuitively, I know why, right? But you can also engage a system to say there must be a reckoning. There must be an accountability. Exactly. Why don't they care? Why aren't they making that the story of the boy at the bottom of the well? But we have to make that the story. That's what I'm saying. Look, you, you, you used to listen to the radio and you thought, you know what? I got something else to say. You started your own station, right? Okay. I, I used to look at rock and roll and say, I can do this better. I can do this different. I started my own rock and roll band, which turned into my own radio station, you see? So this is the thing. We need to start our own radio station. We need to start our own blog. We all we need, need to be the individuals we are, and that way the cookie-cutter Borg cannot overtake us. Very well that's, said. Yeah. See, that's, what, that's why, and when we talked before, and I, and I talk, say this, story, don't get caught in this left-right stuff. You know what I mean? Look at, look at a human being who's come back from a war. Whether or not you agree with why they were there, why they enlisted, you look at a human being, and you see that person hurting, and you do not. Lend, lend your hand, okay? You're, then you're not in line with Christ or Buddha or whatever you believe in. You're not in line with that. You're in line, you're basically falling into the same ditch that everybody else is in. They divide and conquer us, and they do yeah. it scientifically. If you lead with your heart, you'll see a person who's standing there that needs help, right? So if we look as a country at these wounded warriors or, you know, uh, or why are like I think I saw on your side, or maybe it was Drudge, where these kids are now coming up with these GMO pesticides in their systems, okay? We need to do something about that. We need to stand up and, okay, in my case, I'm, I'm willing to put my public cachet out there and say, these are the questions that need to be asked. And then somebody's going to try to drill me from the left and drill me from the right because I'm not a scientist. Of course I'm not a scientist. I'm a rock star. I'm less than a scientist. But right? you can go research the scientific reports that are out there. You can ask the question, right? Okay, and, and then as an American public, if there's enough of us, we can demand an answer. Sure, why is cancer increasing? Instead of looking for the cure, why aren't we looking for the cause? All right, Billy, I've got to throw this in here at the end. Uh, I've seen over 500 articles literally saying there are no drones. Now, the Washington Post announced 40 plus billion dollars to launch, 30,000 of them in the next eight years. They're arresting cattle thieves with them in North Dakota. Uh, they've got drones here in the town I live in. The police are now arming them. That's all over the news, but they've come out and said, oh my gosh, the farmers are all upset and the American people are upset it's not happening. So I think they were trying to shove that down our throat. The backlash came. And so now they're saying everything is fine. But my point is here babbling, is that things like the TSA groping us, things like checkpoints on highways or drones above us, I think fundamentally gets through to the public that, hey, this whole military system we've paid for to dominate the globe, it's now coming back on us. Your take on the drones, the TSA, and then anything else you'd like to add in closing? You know, I think it's, um, look, there's an inevitability to what's going on. Uh, we all read 1984 in school uh, or Brave New World. Um, where this kind of uh, dystopia was, was uh, sort of sketched out. Uh, of course, in school, we read these books with the idea that we'll never live in a society like this. Um, and now we're waking up and realizing that we are. The cell job, of course, is going to be it's going to make us safer. Uh, if we all have some RFID chip on us, um, you know, no one will be able to commit a murder because we'll always know where everybody is. You know, you, you, or, uh, God forbid, a kid goes missing, one of the worst things I can think of. Uh, we'll be able to trace where that kid went and who was with that kid. That's going to be the sell job. Now, we're going to have to make really critical decisions as a culture and a society and as a world populace uh, what, what, for what price freedom. So far in the last decade since, or plus uh, since 9-11, uh, the American public seems really okay with it, uh, shockingly so. Um, and it's uh, difficult to ma imagine that um, we seem to be hurtling in this direction with no break on. Um, and and it's, certainly if there's a nefarious system that wants to put these things in place, uh, they've seen the apathy. Uh, you remember there was that day, the, you know, uh, the protest, the TSA day and all that. And, and unfortunately, millions of people didn't, uh, didn't uh, do anything, and that was the end of that. You know? Um, you know? So if we know this is coming, uh, you know, at what point do we say no? At what point do we say we're not going to accept this anymore collectively? Because as individuals, you can sit there and... Uh, bitch and moan all you want. Um, you know, if you're just going to be one hero standing alone in the wilderness, it's not going to work. It's going to take a collective effort, and it's going to take a, 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 a synthesizing of, of, of voices 
that have a, a kind of a collective belief. It, it, it can't be that, that left-right stuff because that's always going to break down into an argument. It has to be a fundamental belief that, uh, uh, you know, it's like when we cross the street, we take a chance of getting hit by a car, just kind of part of what goes with crossing the street. You call it the nanny state. Um, you know, at some point, is, is the majority of our country, do they want to live in a nanny state? So far, the vote seems to be yes. Specifically, so uh, specifically you fly a lot. Uh, do you have any horror stories with the TSA? No, I'm lucky in that, uh, you, know, I, um, uh, you know, I opt out. Uh, I refuse to walk through the uh, scanning machines. Uh, I've read the scientific data. You know, I've done my own research. Uh, I don't feel comfortable going through those machines. Um, I've seen, you know, uh, where I've been radiated at other points in my life just through, through x-rays and stuff where it hurt my immune system. Uh, you know, uh, I, I, I have enough problems with that as it is, uh, just by the, my schedule and, and, and my lifestyle. So um, I choose to opt out. Um, you know, 19 out of times out of 20, I've been treated very courteously uh, and professionally, and so I don't have a, any particular complaint. That being said, I disagree with the idea. Um, and, w of course, it, what's really weird is then we go to Europe or other places, and the systems are different. So again, on, just on logic, right, just on, you know, normal human logic, why isn't there a homogenized system if the, if the threat is the same? That's, that's what this, I find curious. Very well said. Uh, I'm going to let you go. Hopefully can talk to you when you get back uh, to town. Hopefully someday we run into each other again. Uh, and I'll say hi to man cow uh, to you. This is off air. And I can cut this in anywhere. Uh, but anything else you want to add? Billy, anything else that you th would like to impart to the audience or try to get folks to think about? If I had any, any just general message from, from my perspective, it's that we all have to take responsibility. And we all have to do something. In my case, I'm willing to talk about these things openly and kind of sit more in the, in the energy of hope, uh, but not the Pollyanna version. I believe in the goodness of most people. Um, there, there is evil in the world. Um, and, and, and if God has taught us anything, the only way to combat evil is, is to be better than evil with light and love. And so we must embrace our families, our communities. We must really care about our brothers and sisters. And if we don't, then we are just, as, as, as was once famously said in the 60s, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. Well said. It's a Hunter S. Thompson quote. Uh, yeah, trust in God, but roll away from the rocks of so the Bedouin saying that he was uh, paraphrasing, uh, trust in God, but tie up your camel. Yes, trust, but, but, but you've got to have right action. Billy Corrigan, SmashingPumpkins.com. Again, congratulations uh, on your new record. I love it, and it's definitely in my playlist. Thank you so much for spending time with us, and be safe down in South America. Thank you, Alex. God bless. Bye-bye. Folks, there goes Billy Corrigan. Well, now that Mr. Corrigan has left us, I've got a few things to say about him. He really does have courage. For every 10 or 15 famous people that we end up getting contacted by or that I run into and talk to who are awake, maybe one of them is willing to come on the show because the system does come after you. But we're going to lose everything if we don't reverse what's happening. If the globalists don't realize that their system is insane and that even though they think they're in control of it, the blowback is going to destroy them as well as us. And, you know, Billy talked about, well, people didn't stand up, so nothing happened. And that was the one point I disagreed with him, but we didn't have time in the interview to get into it. I, with others, helped organize the national opt-out day. And for more than two weeks, they just turned the scanners off almost everywhere. For two days, the day of Thanksgiving and after, they totally turned them off. And uh, there's lawsuits over that. Bob Barr is suing them to get the documents, you know, to find out why they did that. But the answer is pretty simple. They didn't want to give us a chance to start a new civil rights movement. They didn't want to give us a chance to really show our power. That's what they do. Every time we try to take the field against the new world order and we're going to win, they back off. They disappear. They strike when they want to strike. It's a guerrilla war on us. It's, it's, it's jungle hit and run attacks. We've got to do the same thing in the info war. Every little thing you do where you're individualistic, where you don't just put something out that was pre-programmed, sabotages their system of predicting what we're going to do and how our social movements operate. Let me tell you, I was impressed by that interview, and I'm very impressed by Billy Corrigan and this new album. Uh, in fact, I think it's probably the best album he's ever put out, even better than the stuff that came out in the early and mid-90s. Uh, and it's good to have people like him out there who are 
reaching millions of others with the message of think for yourself. All right, here we go, folks. Here it is from the new Smashing Pumpkins album. Get it at smashingpumpkins.com. And in closing, uh, it is a fact that governments are the number one cause of death when special interests control them. Uh, the University of Hawaii has done the studies. There's other studies out there. 260 plus million people were killed by government in non-military action. That's a few hundred million more. It, you know, civilians, innocent people, 200 plus million were killed by governments. Shot, starved to death, killed. That's not counting carpet bombing and things like that. Or Hiroshima and Nagasaki. 260 plus million people. That's how many have been killed via democide. And that's a term almost no one even knows. You know all about serial killers. You know all about not trusting your neighbor. You know all about Al-Qaeda. Better chance of being killed by a honeybee sting. Look at the statistics on that. You know all about things that are non-existent. It's like Jaws. For two years after that movie came out in the early 70s, they had over 50% less people at the beaches in the United States. Same thing in Australia, other areas. Because people thought that big gray shark was out there and was going to eat them. Less than five people die a year on average worldwide from great whites. But because there's so much coverage, you know about it. And even when I'm out in the ocean, I sometimes kind of think about it. Even though I consciously know I've got a better chance of being hit by a meteorite or struck by lightning twice than I do being eaten by a great white. It's a total joke, ladies and gentlemen. Why am I bringing up democide? Why is democide so important? Because we're told the drones, the checkpoints, the police state, all of this is for our safety. But the number one historical threat in history is governments setting up these police states for our supposed safety. And now the Pentagon admits they want regular army and Marines in every city to respond to terrorists. And they say the new terrorists are the American people. So all their excuses of taking our liberties and freedoms for our safety are frauds. The number one threat is this national security state run by the private mega banks that are monopoly men. We're told to fear our neighbors. We're told to fear, you know, the evil Arabs, as they call them. We're told to fear all of this, but we should fear big government. Our founders, 235 years ago, they knew the big threat. Read what Thomas Jefferson said. Read what George Washington talked about. Read what other philosophers, Victor Hugo in France, talked about. The state is the big threat because it can get away with almost anything. It controls the military. It controls the police. And when special interests get control of it, look out. That's our talk with Billy Corgan, and that's my addendum to it. I want to thank Billy for spending time uh, with us here on the air. And we will take you back now to the live radio show, Infowars.com.